Hello and welcome to Dash 28 Live. I'm your host, Mike Atkins, and today we are bringing you a fourth round matchup from Call to Arms 6. Uh, this will be between Jonathan Quayle and Matt Griffin. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Uh, you guys are currently on table four, which is pretty high up in the, what are we up to, 49 table. So, yeah, uh, you guys are doing quite well so far in this event. This should be a really good match. Uh, joining me here, I've got Joey Greek, Matt Carmack, and uh, Tom Robinson. Tom, uh, Matt. Joey, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good to see you guys. Uh, all right, you guys are going to be well, playing. Good to see you, Mike. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be playing push with two tokens at 2,300 points. And without any further ado, let's check out the lists so we know what we're talking about here. It's all seamless. Should we just we should pad in the background? Do, 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 do. We should. Do, 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 do. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, or do you want the do you want the artistic version of the list? There we go. There you go, look at that snazzy, right? All right, John, uh, can you walk us through your list, please? Yeah, sure. Um taking night nice stalkers, first time. Well, not first time, um, but probably only half a dozen games I play with these guys. Take it on mainly because I see too much, well, I don't see too much, but I see a lot of shooting happening on, on most games and a lot of lightning bolt. And um, when they start to look at uh, Matt's list, you know, I was I was right. But um, <laughs> so just take it in another way of, uh, of stealthy guys. Um, gone with a couple of scarecrow hordes and a couple of butcher hordes is my uh, main line. Um, two Phantom Troops are a bit of chaff. Uh, then taking three Mind Screeches, because, you know, what's the point in just taking one? Take three. Um, uh, Hollow Rift Weavers, which we haven't seen a lot, but I think with the changes in COP22, moving them to have, like, uh, Aura Spell Ward and making them uh, scoring units as well, really makes them um, a viable choice now. Uh, three Soul Flayers, because why not? It's, um, uh, again, they've got a boost in 22. They've got Wind Blast, um, 12 attacks, hitting on threes, crush one, thunder one, is is nice to have at the right kind of price point. Um, Butcher Flesh Ripper with a Trickster's Wand. This is kind of like the anti lightning Bolt and also anti Trickster's Wand because I don't really want to be hexed on my mind speeches. Um, and I think one of the coolest units, the Banshee, uh, with a Resident Chorus and the Zephyr Crown, which allows her to cast two Wind Blasts or two um, Enthralls. Uh, as long as she can target two units, they have to be two separate units, within six inches of each other, and the same target restrictions. But with the Zephyr Crown, that means she's got two Wind Blast 8s with damage. Um, she is pricey, she's like 190 points, but she is a bit fun. All right, great. And if I can pop back over just to scroll down and get the totals. There's a total of 15 units and 25 unit strength, although you guys are playing push, so total unit strength doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, and now we will pop over and check out uh, Matt's Sylvan Can. Matt, could you walk us through your list, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I am rocking uh, five total units of the Sylvan Glade Stalkers, uh, new and improved. I've been uh, playing Sylvan Kin for a while now, and I was playing them when everybody thought they were pretty trashy, and I was trying to make Glade Stalkers work. And then lo and behold, they got a uh, super boost. And uh, so, yeah, um, three regiments, two troops. Uh, I'm playing the Windborn, uh, the fast cav with the wind blast that can do damage. Uh, I've got two units of, let's see, I guess I should go in order here. Uh, I've got one unit of the Silver Breeze Cavalry there with the Fire Oil. Uh, fast cap shooters uh, put out decent damage output. Occasionally get that nice little Fire Oil bonus on somebody who's vulnerable to it. Uh, two units of the Stormwind Cav, one with Pathfinder. Uh, the two towers, my Tree Herders, the Wilt Daddy, and uh, the other guy with the Healing Brew. And then the Elven King with the new Wander upgrade with Shard Blade and Blade of the Beast Slayer, who's been real fun. He's just dual-wielding swords, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool little beast. <laughs> I like him a lot. So uh, I, I originally ran him as like a like an Elven King on, on horse for that kind of 360 charge guy. And then when I saw that little upgrade, like my eyes kind of bugged out. I'm like, ah, that's that's too cool not to take. So 
uh, yeah, so I've been testing this list for a while now. I've been having some pretty decent success with it, and it's been a lot of fun to play. So uh, this will be the uh, age-old test as to whether uh, army-wide stealthy can can trump the the mass shooting. So this should be a good one to see. Yeah, great. Uh, Twelve drops a bit on the elite side for twenty-three hundred points, but they're elves, so kind of comes with the territory. Um, all right, so now let's take a look at your UB realm. Uh, this is the standard terrain map for round four. Uh, and it looks like we've got Matt deployed across the top. Uh, so Matt, could you walk us through your deployment starting over on the left? Sure. Uh, so we've got the Silver Breeze Cav, Fast Cav over here on the left flank, hanging out all by themselves. Uh, three of my units of the Glade Stalkers crowd around the woods here with the Elven King uh, kind of hanging out in the woods there in front of them. Uh, in the center, we've got the non-Pathfinder Stormwind Cav. Uh, directly to their right, we've got Wilt Daddy in green and the regular Tree Herder in blue. And tucked in behind them is the Windborn. Uh, next to them, we've got my uh, Heavy Cav with the Pathfinder. And then uh, two more units of Glade Stalkers, the Troop and a Reg, to round out the list. All right, great. Uh, and then, John, could you walk us through your deployment down here on the bottom, start on the left? Um. I went through the main line of the Scarecrow Hordes and two Butcher Hordes, and the Scarecrow's on the side. The Flesh Ripper tucked in between, and then the Rift Weavers in the back, just holding on to the two tokens. And then either side of those are two Troops of Phantoms, and then I put the uh, Soul Flares without any items on the left, ones with striding boots uh, in the middle. And then on the right-hand side, in this forest, for no particular reason, um, is three Mind Screeches, yeah, oh, I'm moving the mind speech. And then <laughs> one banshee hiding in between those, and then the ram soul flayers. So those are the ones with the um, uh, thunderous two crush one. Okay, great. Uh, all right, yeah, and you guys are playing push. I see you're using the red dots for the tokens. Um, and I think that's, I think that's it. So I think you guys have some scout moves to do. Um, yeah, John, you don't have any scouts, right? No scouty for me. Okay. Oh, hey, so, great. great. Uh, so then, uh, thanks for walking us through your, your deployment and everything, guys. You guys can drop off the, uh, the studio now and go back to your uh, messenger chat and get the first uh, scout moving first turn going. And we'll All see right. you guys back here after your first and third turns to check in on your thoughts on how the game's going. Uh, thanks. We'll see you guys back in a bit. Good luck. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Sweet. Cheers, guys. Good luck. Yep. Okay, let's bring the clock up. All right, so you guys have seen the lists, and you've seen the deployments, and you know what scenario they're playing. Uh, so what do you guys think we're going to see here? A lot of shots. Um, I personally never prescribe to Night Stalkers or a shooting counter, because um, it's a lot of defense for The Butchers are, but the most of the rest of the list doesn't necessarily counter for up shooting. Yeah. Um, he, he's not going to kill the mind screeches through shooting most likely because they'll hit on sixes there. But um, it's not hard to peel off phantoms, uh, especially because they're not going to be inspired until they get near the wolf father. But on the flip side, I also think Matt also has his own inspiring issues. Um, there's a lot that's kind of just hanging out because it's bush, and he split up the tree herders in the middle. So on the right, the Glade Stalkers over there, they're not inspired. Um, so they could get sniped on a high roll pretty easily. But I guess I guess one good thing for the Night Stalkers is that both those tree herders are likely to walk straight up to the middle here before the, yeah, before the game starts. Yeah, by turn three, they'll be inspired. Yeah. I have yeah. played Matt a couple of times at GTs with basically this same list. Um, so I have a I have a pretty good sense of how he plays it, um, and it is a lot of um, avoidance. It is a lot of what you would expect, like shoving tree herders up in your face, and then when you don't break them, uh, getting some some cav in your flank or in your face, and then otherwise just a lot of wind blasting you around and shooting you and um, aiming for a scenario win by the end of the game. Yeah. It doesn't help that uh, it's the hills in the center of the table, not the forest, because it's going to, while it does block some line of sight, it's not going to offer much cover 
from all the shooting. So once he's on the hills, effectively, he's just going to get lit up. Um, I it's think it's going to be an interesting fight. I think you can yeah. fairly reliably say that the Sylvan King, our well, right flank as we're looking at it, is just going to get mine screeched off. Like that's dead. And the problem is that that starts opening up flanks for the two um, sword flayers, and those three headers are great, but they don't like getting flanked by something like that, which hits as hard as they do. I think that's the issue. You can see he's angling the tree header already for that. Um, other than that, it's, it's left flank's fine, and I think yeah, you're quite right in terms of looking at uh, night stalkers aren't necessarily counter shooting because quite a lot of the time you are you are you're swapping defense five for top. defense four. So minus yeah, one hit, but yeah. you're winning faster. But the the I, I think I see them as a, a good counter to these kind of arms because they've got the amount of mine screeches with the lightning bolt that they've got. So usually armies which have uh, say glade stalkers everywhere, they're all defense yeah. three anyway. So you can mostly just pick them up fairly easy. And they're not exactly yeah. cheap on a seventy five. Uh, they do go down quick. So um, and I'm playing Adam Padley on my end. It's usually more than lions versus night stalkers, and that's a hard counter. Because it ignores all my stealth from my pack hunters. My nerves crap. My defense is crap. Uh, and my units are relatively like, average cost to a little bit above. So it's a horrible matchup for me. And it's not, I'm, I'm going to get a short range army at 12 inch for um, Javelins and such. So in that in that sense, Night Sox are a hard counter. They're a mediocre counter here. There's so much nerve on the board. It's going to be tricky for um, the Sullivan King to maximize the shooting on it. And that Banshee is an absolute nightmare. I'm going to so wonder much. if he wanted Shakira more in this. If he knew what this was going to be the matchup, if he would have wanted Shakira instead. I think the Banshee is just going to do it. I think the Banshee is going to do an absolute number. Like, it's the nice thing with Shakira is she will lock down a unit a turn. Every yeah. turn. Yeah. Um, I'm not, she, she's good, but the Banshee is super expensive, coming in at about 190 points right. with all that. But. Like that Banshee could quite feasibly, because the Wimblast ignores all cover, go in, uh, kill a troop, and waver a regiment in one round. Which, which would sting. <laughs> and John got first turn, which is very big yeah. for him. He needs yeah, to yeah. establish the first kill. Yeah, you, do you like definitely it. don't want the tree herders in the middle to have two two movement phases unanswered, basically. Yeah. I was going to say it helps help shut down some of the threat projection. Um, I do like his formation in general, like just the the way he's stacked. <laughs> <it>. Yeah, <laughs> that's great, <laughs> great. <laughs> beautiful, um, and and also exactly what he should do. He needs to just keep like the units that are vital in cover. He's got his units that are less vital and can soak up the bow shots in the front. Everything else stacked behind it, either out of line of sight or bare minimum in cover depending on what their heights are right and and um, backstopping things so that they can all be wind blasted so far right exactly like like that is about as good of a formation you can present here and he doesn't really care about presenting flanks to the sylvan kin all that much like yeah he doesn't want to just give them free flanks but like it realistically they're going to be nastier shooting him and staying back and preventing him from taking action um than they would be if they're just charging in anyway in most cases. Like if the if the scarecrows give him a flank, I might take that. But otherwise, like I don't even know that the, the Wilt Father wants to grab like you grab the token and then just back up, honestly, and then just keep shooting until you absolutely have to cross. Yeah, I did like the 18 forward thing, but it was not a good idea. <laughs> that was fun, but it wasn't good. <laughs> Good, yeah, good, good for the audience. Not necessarily great for your game. Yeah, no. He can he can get better cover. Yeah, if he does it a little less. There we go. But it's roughly the idea. I think he just wants. Yeah, there you go. He wants the uh, sword players yeah. a little bit further forward over the phantoms. Yeah. Also on the left side, they were going to not have line of sight to anything, so they weren't going to project really all that well. Now yeah. he's got if him on the hill. If you're going to get on the hill, the tree herder. Yeah. 
if you're going to get on the hill, get on the hill so you can get line of sight. If if you're not going to, just stay off it so he can't shoot you. Mm. Yeah, that does give about a quarter of John's army inspiring off the wolf father for the first turn. That's not bad. I don't yeah, think you're going to lose. I don't think you're going to lose anything first turn. Maybe you have to yeah. be very unlucky because that both those right side I am Greystalkers are about to die. The 18 line of bolt and the 16 effective wind blast is going to do them in. Mm -hmm. Banshee and 18 of both? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like we're about ready to go into shooting. Just brought out the token to put it over mind screech. Yep. Moving on to shooting. You might even go for the storm and just think he's fine. But I'd, I'd get rid of the archers, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you got the opportunity to shoot first against this army, taking taking any number of his shots away before they even get to take their first shot is is pretty big. Mm. Um, yeah. All about critical mass when it comes to this, right? Yeah, definitely. This is, uh... And then turn after, you can put all those mind creatures into the um, Stormwind, and at that point, he's got the entire flank. If, it's, if it goes well. Yeah. It's like two wounds. Two seems about right. Yeah, two wounds seems about right. And you want to put middle and right onto the regiment, and then you want to embust both of them. Ooh, same target. Two more. Two more, yeah. No defense elves. Means pretty yeah. much anything's going to stick. It is one of the downside of them. If you can reach out and touch them back, they don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, the troops are 10 12. Yeah, I won't even bother, John. I won't even bother. Hit the next one. Yeah, yeah. see. see. You can afford to the chances. You can afford to This is and probably yeah, a bit of an overcommitment. Yeah, that was a waste. Yeah. You should have gone for Richmond. I won't. Yeah. Because a waiver is just as effective in this case. It shuts down the shooting. That's really all you care about. Like removing the unit is is a bonus at that point. Yeah, and that is a that that is a guaranteed waiver uh, on that unit now. Yeah, mm -hmm. anything but snakes. And there's three more. Why why is he still shooting it? <laughs> it's the wind blast. Uh, he has risen. It. Bonus. There's no point. You might as well go for the storm into that point. <laughs> right. But yeah, isn't yeah, the whole yeah. point of the wind blast that it does damage in this case? Because he doesn't really yeah. care about pushing it as much. No. no. Yeah. I mean, it Just, wasn't even an inspiring range to begin with. He didn't really need to push what, it back. What time is it in England there, Tom? Uh, it is 10 to 3 over our end. Okay, so he is he's not tired, right? No, no, no. It was just, it was just a bad choice on John's part. I mean, you can, if you did shove three of those damage over, which he'd prong to the troop onto the regiment instead. Um, oh, you may have started drinking the already. regiment, but, but it is one of those things away, where it's man. like, yeah, he, past the first four wounds, that was already a pretty good chance for the waiver, and then he's just starting to amp up damage on the next one. Well, that's a um, nine. Twelve? Um, I don't yeah. think that's enough. Not quite. No, no they're 14, not. 16. Yeah. 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 But it so, would yeah. have been. It would have been <laughs> with, that, yeah. with just two wounds over there. Yeah. He still would have popped the troop. Would have been at least a waiver. Unfortunately, now finishing off that Sylvan Glade soccer regiment is more of a pain in the ass. But, yeah. Okay. All right, soul flares. What's the nerve on Banshees? Uh, dash 12, I think. Um, 12. Dash 12, okay. Dash 12, yeah. Defense 4. Oh, it's super defense easy four. to kill. It's 190 points, but well, yeah. that's easy to kill. Stealthy, individual. Oh. Um, it's easy yeah. to kill if you have 12 lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. lightning once bolt, you hit 10, right. 10 plus lightning so, bolt, it's really easy. Or if, you, or if you've got a character that can just punch it in the face a couple times. Right. right. I mean, you always hit on sixes. And the St Silver Breeze have Wind Blast that does damage, so realistically, that's yeah, John, a, an actually John. a really good option for him is just to use the Silver Breeze to walk forward. And yeah, Windborn might there. actually better serve to think, yeah, you're right. Yeah, just try to get that Banshee out of the way because it'll be an absolute nightmare mid to late game. Right. 
It's like either that or the mind screeches, but I don't think you're picking up the mind screeches when they're that deep in cover. Yeah, you'll just get shot off yourself in turn. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what he does with this then. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be a good thing to ask Matt after this round is um, how much did, did John's first turn throw off his game plan, if at all. Um, we're expecting John to pop in and tell us how he felt his first turn went here in a minute. Hopefully. Yeah, so just seeing seeing the die roll, like he, he easily could have picked up the troop and wavered the regiment on the far right. Um, he would have picked him up, actually, because he would have done four wounds and then roll a nine. If he yeah, yeah if he if he moved it after four wounds, he would have picked it up. If he moved it after eight, he would have wavered it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you can't count on rolling a nine for nerve either. So no. true. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I think past like I, I would have said the, the rolling after four was, was acceptable to guarantee the pop at least, but sure rolling past eight at that Knowing point. Knowing that you were gonna win blast it, I think. Because yeah. you know that shot's coming in after. Yeah. Right. But I mean it's a 10, 10 12 troop, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like it, in my mind, you do four wounds to that and it's already effectively like you're gonna you're gonna waver it on on more than average uh, rolls all right we got john back hey john hey guys hey how we doing so getting to go first in a match like this um you got to feel like that's that that's a good way to start off right like yeah, yeah. Um, managed to get into early shots, get some early damage in on those uh, glade stalkers. Um, maybe, maybe went a little bit too heavy on the troop. <laughs> maybe gonna shoot the rage. But yeah, um, I, was, I was shouting at you while you were doing it. I yeah, I know. I was. <laughs> the thing is, though, I, I averaged it was going to be like two hits. So I thought, put two hits onto the um, onto the troop because they were on four. And then when I wind blast them, it's going to put them close to like a five, rather than it being a case of me go, well, I'll put a couple of damage onto the onto the reg. So uh, it's a it's a fifty fifty. I maybe should have gone for the reg for high, but hey, you know you live and learn. Sixth game. <laughs> you did you did pick up the troop though, so that is that is the first blood in the match. Um, and uh, I'm guessing Matt's not going to take a lot of time moving. So um, could you give us your thoughts on just what your what your general plan is for the game here? Um, is to kill everything I can on the right hand side um, before he tries to collapse on the left. I'm going to avoid as much as I can the tree herders until as late as I can because I just, I mean, defense six and radiant to life. I'm not, <laughs> not going to try and get a dent into them, um, which is going to mean it's going to be down to uh, I'm pitting them back with the soul flares and trying to make him so he doesn't come too far forward and then I can hit him in the flank because um, if I can get. You know, if I get big chunks of damage, it's different to if I can just get chip damage from my shooting. Um, yeah, so, I mean, next target is going to be the Windborn and the uh, Glade Stalker Reg, and then I'll be trying to get the Knights. Um, at the moment, being able to outrange them a bit with the um, Phantoms and the Soul Flares kind of keeps them a little bit back. I know I'm probably going to lose a lot of Scarecrow just for shooting. Um, so I've just got to play it canny, I think. Uh, and see what he comes back with. Okay, so just just stay castled up, shoot at the right, hold on the try, try to hold on the left, try to delay in the middle. Yeah, leave the tree herders till last. Um, okay. And accept are you gonna, that I'm going to lose a lot of scarecrows. <laughs> sure, sure. Are are you, are you going to try to grab the center token or just basically leave it alone? Um, until I'm just going to cover it. So at the moment, if he goes for it with the tree herders, um, he's going to expose one flank. Um, somewhere, so I'm just going to keep him back with that until I've maybe done a bit more damage on the right hand side, um, and then see how it goes from there. Because if I go and run onto it, it'll just hit me with knights and take the token, and I won't be able to do anything with it. So we'll just see. All right, great. Anybody got any other questions for John about the first turn? What we're playing for the rest of the game? No, no, gotta have it. Mm -mm. All right, apart from not shooting the right targets. 
<laughs> it was it was really it's like a it's a minor optimization thing. It's not a big. If you'd ignored them completely and gone for the storming cap, it'd be like, well, you've probably been dealing with them now. Yeah, but <laughs> it's not that bad. So. That's strike one from Tom. Don't do it again. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I can hear that in his voice. You can just hear that. Uh, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yes. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys. I'll get back to it. All right. All right, John. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that first turn for him is, is so big in terms of like changing the flow of how this game could have gone. Losing that first turn becomes much rougher for the army. Gets a whole extra turn of shooting in. Yeah, Actually, for, more curious for these armies, Tom's especially mission. like uh, nobody cares about. Well, because because with some shooting armies, you're like, well, I don't want to go first because I want you to move towards me. But these right. guys right. kind of don't care about moving. The twelve inch ones, yeah, right. These guys are both fine with moving and shooting. Yeah. I'm not really sure if he's going to shoot the scarecrows. He might just take the sixes on soul flares instead, but that's going to be curious even, to see what Matt yeah. really cares about. Just be worth ignoring him and just going for a butcher hard. Right. Can you uh, check the... the how scary than the scarecrows are? Right. Uh, it would take you three turns to shoot a horde off, and that's half your game. Uh, yeah. Angle of the bottom left, uh, not the scarecrows, the uh, soul flares. He's does he pass the flank on that with the cannon? They might be intending to. Yeah, they're in the front. Yeah. They're in the they're front. In the front. Okay. They're still okay. in the front, yeah. Yeah. The little white arrow makes it very easy. Yeah. It's very useful and a good idea. I should really do that. Mainly just trying to get an idea if he's trying to get flank shots there because that removes the cover at least. So it's just shy on yeah. that. He has he seen could it as have well. He it differently there. So that might just yeah. be something he goes back to. Or they've talked He's about seen... it said the intent to be in the flank. Sure. You can, you can see moving the gray star because he's trying to keep them out of six inch of each other with that resonant chorus now. <laughs> That's a new thing. Once per turn, after casting his wind by so the banshee will immediately cast the same spell again on a different target within six inches of the original target. Okay. So Silver Breezer speed ten, right? Nine. Nine. They're only nine. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, Silver Breezer ten. No, Stormwind. They're nine. ten. Yeah. 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 yeah the Silver Breezer ten. The Windborn are ten. Then the Stormwind are nine. Yeah. I don't know how he does it, but I want to see him pick up the banshee with that unit. <laughs> Um, so did I see that right? That Tom, you you won the UK Masters again? Yeah, yeah, nice. I defend, defended my title. <laughs> is that is that is that three in a row? Like, is that a, an actual hat trick? No, it's not. I missed. I, I I didn't win it first time round. I won the second one. I didn't win the third one. I won the fourth and the fifth. So we try to rig our US Masters by making the winner host the next one, and then they have to TO. So now they can't play. <laughs> Well, we had, what was it? It was Brad and then... Uh... Eric Tro. Yes, that was it. Yeah. It's like the pitch with the first Austin Masters was Pat was like, I'm going to be commentating, so you don't have to deal with me. Right. <laughs> so is, is Mantic at this point just like offering you a travel budget to just go to other countries and beat them up since the UK's not really... Worth the time um, anymore? Well, because I won the UK Clash of Kings, they're sending me to Adepticon. That's it. There you so, go. There you go. I'm, I am. I'm. I'm doing that. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully, like, I, oh, I've got a, I've got an armory going on with the uh, my staircase now. It's got a very tacky armory of a, a battle axe and a star from Masters and Clash of Kings. And <laughs> I'm going to go on all the way around. and be pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> tacky trophy staircase. Man, this is the. Uh... Is he trying to shit here? Yeah, he's going to try and pick the scarecrows up. Scare okay. okay. So this is a push out, I guess. Yeah. I won't get my wish. I'm saying. 
Picks up a couple more. Yeah, I think I would have preferred the Soul Flayers, at least with them. Yeah. You could have, yeah, I'd have probably done the two regiments first into the Scarecrows, and then if you'd done a decent whack, you don't need to kill them this turn, but then next two can go into the Soul Flayers. That's a good roll, though. Six hits. Mm. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Five. Ooh, five. Sometimes the truth it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like last time I played him, his, his troops did as much damage as his regiments. Well, they should. Shooting. They only have two less dice. Yeah. It's six and rerolls. Stick it three six. more. Out of like, because the, the Sylvan Grace Dark are true, that can fire past the barricade. Anyway, without taking a cover penalty, so I don't know why he moved on to it. What I would have done is I'd kept that silver uh, troop because the soul flares are in range of the um, silver breeze. I'd have kept right. them turned uh, roughly ninety, so they could still see them. So when they come in, they could take a flank charge on them because the soul flares will probably wave the silver breeze in one go. And if they do kill them, then they're in your back lines, and you got to deal with that. All right, so that is 15 wounds from the shooting, and here comes the Wind Blast, which will also do damage. Yeah. They are dash 21 and out of range. Just two more. For, oh, there you go. for Mind Thirst, yeah. 17. So that's needing a four once. No, 16, so five once. I don't know. Pretty good. Does he have to roll to damage with it after? He, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the mm -hmm. wind is hit, but then he's got to roll the damage, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's um, good hit there, too. Cover. So four hits. Uh, only four hits. Yeah, because he moved in. Forgot the that he takes a cover penalty for moving into the terrain. Yeah. All right, four, four out of 12 even, dice is still pretty fucking good. Even, yeah. with, even with Pathfinder, yeah. you still take that? Yeah, because yeah. you moved into yeah. it, so you count it when you're measuring line of sight. Right. And he does pick up the horde. Yeah. That was the other reason why the wind blast was, I thought, key. Because then it means he has to move back into the train and take another minus one. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. fine, you should forget about it. <laughs> yeah, so they trade they trade units in shooting. Yeah. And that'll bring us back to John's turn. I just, I just, I just want to see that wind blast on the banshee. I just want to see it. That's all I want this game. <laughs> so we're gonna have a big spinny game. Really strong right side for John. Really strong left side for Matt. Mm. Yeah. And here's Matt. Hey, Matt. Hello, guys. All right. So you guys got a little call and response thing going right now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I hate the right side of the battlefield. Uh, he has concentrated all of his really scary range stuff over there, and I had no inspiring over there. This is the downside to having like three fewer drops than he did. And I, I couldn't figure out which side and where he was going to concentrate any of his shooting stuff. So basically, like I had to leave that right side that my trees have to be together. Like it's I've, I've played enough of this that like I don't break the trees up hardly ever. So the only other inspiring source I have in the list is the Elven King, and he can only cover one half of the battlefield when I deploy these guys in the middle like that. So, you know, I basically put him over where I thought he was going to have more things that he could inspire. And I was hoping that those guys over there would get to skate being in the woods. And that's the last time that those guys are going to get to shoot. So they had a fantastic round. My left side of the board did an incredible amount of wounds of those scarecrows. And then I was able to put five on with that unit in the pond over there. So even if they die this turn, no complaints because, you know, they could have got skunked last turn if he would have split a shooting up a little differently. Um, so yeah, I can't complain about that first turn. I figured he would take this charge over here. For those guys to be able to shoot, I had to give him that charge, and the hope was that they could just stick it for a round. I think I put my king in a position where he could go to help them if need be. No, nope, I got him too far out. I wanted him to support the field. So that was the other decision I had to make, was whether or not that king was going to go try to help them if he took that charge. So that might be the only shots that those guys get for the game. I'm hoping the low attacks on the soul flares lets them survive that for a round or two and just kind of pin them there. But knocking out that Scarecrow Horde was huge. That was a pretty big way to start the game off. So, 
Yeah, I was going to ask if you would rather shoot the Scarecrows or the Soul Flayers, because um, you could have gotten like the regiment on the flank shot, so no cover there. Yeah, so I could have got a couple shots on there, but the, the thing is, is like I, I don't want to leave him with, with the ability to keep units on the table. Like If I spread wounds out, I find that I, I do worse, and I just end up with like a lot of units that that I can't take off. So I'd much rather like pick something, focus it, delete it, and and let him keep those guys. Because I also would have had to fire with cover with all the other units, and I, I don't want to take shots on sixes. It's just it's so much worse than shooting on fives. So I typically will rather just like sacrifice those couple wounds that I might have done to those guys. I mean, there's a, there's a world where maybe I do enough to them, and, and with one good test, I'm not scarecrow rolling. Yeah, yeah. If I if I wouldn't would have, I was gonna roll as, as hot as I did, I might have split that up. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if if uh, I like my odds of killing the scarecrows as much if I don't take those fourteen shots there. So, but yeah, we'll we'll see uh, how this is gonna go. But right now, my my biggest concern is is the the woods on this right side of the field. I don't really have any good way to threaten his range stuff. So it'll it'll depend on how how scary that is uh, a couple turns down the line. Now he's, he's going to kill this Glade Stalker unit in the pond. And then hopefully I'll be able to commit everything to combat and, and not give him a lot of opportunities to, to really use his shooting over here. Um, so if he, if he has all his shooting stuff over on this right flank and everything on that right flank is fighting or committed, then, then hopefully I can, you know, give him a turn or two of, of, of pretty meaningless shots. Um, but he's got so much wind blast and like, hell, he should be able to find something to do. So, but yeah, we'll see. All right, great. Uh, I think that that pretty much covers everything uh, that we would think about asking you. So unless anybody's got any other questions from that, I'll just say good luck, and we'll see you back here at the end of your third turn. All right, thanks, guys. All right. All right. That unit's going to disappear before it gets to Windblast the Banshee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, John's. I think John's lining up for um, getting those wind bond next. Yeah, I don't know why he's being so cagey with his mind screech because there's literally nothing that's going to be able to stop those mind screech now. You can do whatever they like for the rest of the game. Yeah, you can just start moving them up, and the storm are not going to stay there because they're going to get wind he's, he's got cover from the hill, regardless to the rest of the army. So, like, it's it's yeah. he can they're as not, long as he picks up them. that regiment. Yeah, there's there's no reason for him to hide in the forest anymore. Right. Um, and he can just start working his way around the right. He can start picking up the knight. I wouldn't even put the banshee over there. I think John's been far too cagey. Like the banshee can be roughly where the you know, the center right cross is that marks out the control zone. The banshee can be that close, and then when you're using your your wind blast, you can either wind blast the wind barn or the sort of gray circles, but your second wind blast target is going to be the storm wind and you're going to get a hit. So yeah. why not just be closer and be even more of a threat to the um, gray stalkers on the left flank for the mid, mid game. Yeah. yeah. I think the, oh, the height of the difficult terrain doesn't really matter when it comes to moving Correct. in it or being in it. It's yeah. The, the heights only height. matter when it's, when it's intervening terrain. Yeah. Height matters literally not at all anymore for the purposes of, Basically, moving through it, shooting through it, like all that. The only thing it matters for is is can you see through it, and do you take cover shooting through it? Basically, so like if it's a hill, does it give cover to the stuff behind the hill? Which is why I've, like I've enjoyed people who do alternate height forests difficult, like doing like a height two difficult field or something like that, just for fun. Yeah, um, I usually do the fields height too because I like giving standard infantry places to hide. Yeah, just changes up the game a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's mini wood effectively, isn't it? Yeah, right. right. And if you're if you end up playing against somebody that that brings a bunch of like war engines or something like that, you don't have to pick and choose which things to hide behind the one forest and one hill you have, you know. Um, right, right. Gives you one more place. Like I can just put infantry behind here, and then my taller stuff I can hide behind the hill instead of having to decide what I'm going to put out there for him to shoot at. Right. I run too many Titans to worry about war machines. It's just, it's just going to happen. There are heights under four. I didn't think that was real. <laughs> <laughs> my army can't play without hills, then there's no point playing it. That's. 
how I view it. All right. So I think that was, that was the first mind screech on. There's two more. Ooh, Blade Stalker up. Regiment in the Pond. The second one's going to do the same. That puts one to five. They are 14, 16. They are very consistent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two, 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 two. I would be annoyed if I was sitting on force that last one, but the first one yeah. was crazy good too. And the third one might want to go for the wind bomb. Seven. He's looking at a six to waver. If they're in no. the flank, I would Seven just shoot the wind blast first. Seven to waver currently. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd probably go for the wind bomb and then the banshee can do the finishing touches on the glare stalkers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he has to put the so banshee I... all the way up here. Still just barely in minus something. And looks like the third one is going to go after the windborn. Yeah. I want one more thing to guarantee the waiver on the regiment. That's that's what I want to see. I would just roll the banshee. If the banshee's in the flank, it's pushing to the side, so you're not going to mess with your ranges. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just yeah. see what it does. All right. One, two more. Tom's so over here like nice. strike two. Yeah. <laughs> It's nine I mean, regiment, uh, so that's gonna be a I, 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 honestly, if he stopped shooting it now, I'd be fine with it. But now he's going to throw the ban <laughs> like now he has the banshee on top of that. Yeah, banshee hasn't got a choice because he's put it so far across on the right flank. He's he's got to. Yeah. So he does an extra wound there, which I mean, now two. it's two wounds. Two yeah. wounds. Oh right, they're only defense three. So so yeah, he's looking at that's that's a pop there. That's a five. Yeah. Yeah, or a guaranteed waiver, which is just as good. Yeah. And only once, as again, as Matt was saying, doesn't have any inspiring over there. So he may have almost pushed it into. Well, no, no, no. Oh, nah. no. <laughs> there, there's, there's a way. There's a way. And that was two, two ones rolled to. I believe that was that, damage. damage yeah. yeah, that should be damage. The, the wind, the yeah, the storm wind. All right, so here comes the nerve roll on the regiment. A seven will pick them up. Mm -hmm. Yep. The seven would have picked them up with only nine wounds on them. What a waiver on blast, the, is it? On a waiver would have been fine. But yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, the on next the, time you can move up again, you add your dread on, one more lightning bolt, and you still you're up on where the bunch was. Right. This is an interesting nine one. Nine hits. Yeah, three and two, two nine eight. hits. The seven. The seven, okay. These are nine. Six, nope. okay. <laughs> four. That's, that's so very nice. fortunate, but yeah. it would yeah. be so nice to have that troop take a flank on the soul flares and just get them out of the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that is going to bring us to the bottom of turn two. They have Thunder One, Crush One on the soul flares, or is it just yeah, Thund Thunder Crush One, Crush Thunder One? Yeah. yeah. So stripping the the Thunder will help a little bit. Yeah, they'll yeah, you'll you'll put a, two or three damage on them, but they'll go down next turn. I think. Yeah, so they've got the greatest nerve that have there. They're only 13, 15, 15? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I think you can just turn turn the glade stalkers and just shoot it, because um, the silver breeze should be able to just sidestep five and pivot, and probably get out of one inch. Can he, can you don't even have to do that? the withdraw. I don't know. He's up against the table edge there. Yeah, so he can't to... withdraw, so he would have to sidestep to the yeah, right. You can, can sidestep. Yeah. You don't have. You just have to be further away when you finish if you haven't used your withdraw. I've, oh, I don't know if they changed that in FAQ where you have to you, you move it. Back. You have to at least end an inch away. Is the trick? You can walk within the inch if you don't withdraw. That's mm -hmm. the difference. I don't know if you can get. It, it used to be that as long as you were further away than when you started, and then I don't know if they changed that in FAQ. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think they did. I think it's got to be a full inch now. Yeah. If you can't, then cool. Yeah, you just fight. You shoot the phantoms off, and then you you turn yeah. around next turn. Hey, it's worth checking if nothing else. Right. I think the phantoms are gaining cover just because I think they're slightly off the hill, but it's like the nice thing about UB is it's really easy to check that kind of crap. Mm. And so Matt has moved his. His trees up onto the hill and picked up that center token, looks like. He's going to offer the flank? 
Yeah, Scarecrow flank. Oh, well, to be fair, the Starflayers are in the flank as well. And that's the, Those yeah, are the helm of the rank, yeah. guys. That's 24 yeah. threes and threes. Yeah, that's very know. bold. That's not... Yeah, I don't know that I would take that trade of make like drawing out the soul flayers so that you could punch them with the storm wind. Definitely just going for it, but I mean I wouldn't have pivoted like that. Also, he may I mean yeah. The knights are gonna be able to block or he can block sorry. Um John will be able to block up those knights based on where he's positioned them currently, mm -hmm. which will also be detrimental to like if he's trying to bait a flank there for whatever reason then he wants to at least be able to finish off whatever comes after it, assuming the tree survives. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I don't know that he has... He might not realize that it's CS1 TC2. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it anyway. I'd still be... Because yeah. that tree had yeah, a go down. The front. But does the other sulfur... Can you, can you check the, the tree? Both, both, both. <laughs> yeah, that's the other problem. Like, if if the Ooh. knights are there, he at least prevents one of them getting in. But then he's still taking the twenty four three and three. But now he's taking both, and I think that's a dead tree. I mean, you could probably give the wind barn up to cover your flank if he's easy. Right. Yeah, yeah. They've got then they'll get there. I'll do the job. And then after that, you you jump into the butchers and you pray to God that your tree herders are alive at the end of the game. I know Alan's watching. He's just quickly messaging Matt, like, <laughs> "Dude, <laughs> we will kick you out of Nerd Hammer if you do not cover this." <laughs> not even counting the butchers, because like, yeah, you can, you can only get one butcher there, but that's all you need. Because the yeah. twenty-four threes and threes should do like eleven, twelve-ish, and the butchers just add an extra four. Yeah, mm. I was gonna say it should be twelve. Um... Anything that uh, Matt has, or sorry, not Matt, uh, John at the bottom have dread, not counting the Banshee? Uh, the uh, Void the weaver. weaver thing be jiggy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So you could also probably, I don't know if that'll be able to sneak into within six inches, but... Uh, if it matches far with 10, it can. But yeah. that's the token carry. You probably don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Horror Rift Weaver. I mean, if he's yeah. committing butchers at that point, it may be worth just keeping up with the butchers. I gotta say, I'm glad the Rift Weaver got its new profile. It used to be the worst monster in the game. It oh, was yeah. actively detrimental to bring. Um, so now, now it does stuff, which is yeah. nice. Do you guys feel like Matt really needed to move those tree hookers up on the hill this turn? It's only turn two. No, I, I think that's an, uh, a panic move. I, I think what's I, happening is he's seeing the right flank and worried that if he doesn't go now, he won't get them, basically. Like, he won't be able yeah. to take the token. And so he's... This This is panic. This, this like, is like, oh, crap, the shooting on that side of the table is worse than mine. And he's yeah. he doesn't know how to respond. Yeah, I think um, the turn three, he's looking at, I'm going to lose the wind barn, and then he's going to start hurting Stormwind Cav as well, and Stormwind Cav is just going to be out of position because of the wind blast, no matter what happens. So I'm going to have to get in now. And he can't wind blast the, um, the tree herders because they've got push tokens. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, don't yeah I don't know how many other heavy shooting now. armies Matt's used to playing. I think he I think he might be accustomed to having his opponent yeah, out shot. Tish out the pain. Yeah. Right. So Not this even is that heavy a shooting. It just he got out dropped and out positioned yeah. on the right. But yeah. I think his left is fine where it's at. It um, is. I mean, John is, John is kind of... Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Choice. Use your, I think is, you use your wind bomb for that. I think you got to use your wind bomb for that. Yeah. I think I think John is, has kind of put Matt in the same position that Matt usually puts his opponent in. And that's him. He picks a, pick, picks a target, shoots I'm, at it until it's dead, and then moves on yeah. to the next one. And... Sylvan King would be holding back until like turn five and then jump in when they're softening stuff up. And if he's having yeah. to do that in turn three, it's not, it's not in the best that, position. That first turn also, like, I, I'll, I'll go back to that for a minute here. If, if Matt has the first turn in this, right? 
first turn he can get his cav like all the way up to that hill in a position like limit the soul flare charges with the trees so that he can only get one soul flare to each knight unit if he wants to play that game um and then at that point That's he basically map. the knights are actually contributing both in terms of threat he's actually able to get them into combats and the shooting either needs to focus on the knights and or the counter shoot like he just the game changes drastically if if Matt's Cav are further forward, but they couldn't move onto the hill because John took first turn and his entire army is able to march up and take control of the center of the board. Um, if we're looking at Lightning Bolt 18, it's not going to kill a Stormwind Cav. Right. That's that's my point. Like he can, if he, he has time. Yeah. Because he's picked all the soft stuff, but there's no more soft stuff other than the Windborn for the Lightning Bolt to go for. So you can put the Windborn cover, use them as the chaff they are, and then the Stormwind can just set up. Well, it's, it's like... You, you can't afford for them to be wavered. Is, is yeah. the other issue. 14, 16, it's 18 Lightning Bolt and whatever the Banshee's tossing. Yeah, so you've got you've got four and a half, and then you've got the Banshee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I push you on five. That's not a bad shout yeah. at a waiver. If you are wavered, that's going to really suck. I mean, the... But I think the bigger issue for him is that the knights have to move forward enough to where they can threaten something. And if he yeah. doesn't do that, then he's just going to keep getting... It's going to be, I move forward a little bit, so I'm within 16 inches. And then the Banshee's going to come over and be like, no, you're not. <laughs> and that's yeah. going to be every turn unless he actually commits them. That's the problem he's yeah. in right now. Those knights are never going to see combat if he doesn't push them for, far enough forward. They're just dead yeah. weight. Yeah. And I mean, he's got, between the soul players and the Banshee, probably about 16, 17 wind blasts or whatever it is. In order to, if he does commit, he's going to have to commit a lot. If he's in 12 inch, then he's too close yeah. already. So. Yeah, and if he wants to, he has 18 more wind blasts off the mind screech. Has he seen it? Has he seen it? Is he going to do it? Go on, go on, turn him off, do it. Just pivot, just a little no, wrong, wrong, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. Mm. And that going. is going to bring that's going to bring the clocks pretty much even. At 50 minutes. Ooh. Yeah, it's on the bottom of turn two. You trying to shoot the. What is he trying to do with those? The Phantoms? How far are the Soul Flayers into 20 on that tree herder? The ones on the right. They're on Definitely 18 better. and a half. Yeah. So if you cover with the Windborn, you can just wind blast them back. Yeah. Just shield. Yeah. Them. Be another good option. Yeah. yeah. Is he trying to protect his shooting from these phantoms? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. He might be thinking, yeah. I wind blast them. And maybe put a troop in, and then the two regiments go for the butchers, and I try and I try and kill his left flank because my right flank dies. He's yeah. committed. Yeah. So so this is what's going to happen next turn. Both soul flares. Yeah. Both both soul flares pick up the tree in the middle, and then he passes the tokens to the one that's in the back, and then the other soul flare eats the knight charge, basically, assuming the knights don't. Phantoms evaporate. will cover it. Yeah. Or or phantoms, yeah. Phantoms can cover it too. He's got he's got all the options in the world to take the tokens now, and all he has to do is play keep away from the from the range. And then John wins. Are dash twelve defense four. That's only like two wounds on them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. pushes him to. Might have actually, if he was going to shoot the other archers, wanted to shoot first. If he was going to. They were all in That's cover. That's a killer roll. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Never mind, don't matter. <laughs> well, if you roll like that, then put it on fours. Mm. Oh. There we go. <laughs> they all they always come <laughs> back. They always come back. Uh, the curve exists across all time and space. <laughs> All right, so that is just one wound from the troop onto the phantoms. Bring them up to three, so he's looking at currently a nine to break. They are fearless. Yeah, I was gonna say those those suckers are. You've you've got to you've got to concentrate on them there. Yeah, they're shockingly it's, durable. 
It's a shame. If he'd have done two or three off of that good roll, he, he might have thought, I'll do one more regiment and I can spare her. Spare somewhere else. But... It's just oh, also really roll. good. <laughs> it's up on oh, the seat. There's two more. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to make sure at that point. Be yeah. careful of those phantoms to be running off and stopping another unit. So it's currently on a seven. I don't think you're rushing to put one wound on butchers here. No. 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 Yeah. That's also pretty good. That's crazy. That's a, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, the hit rolls are great. The wound rolls when he are... does shoot, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because of the eight, so he's looking for a four once. It's not too bad. Yeah. And he gets a seven. seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, nice. that helps him, I mean, continue to keep his shooting block alive. Yep. But this is still all the defense four targets. He has not uh, gotten into the butchers yet, which is the trick. Yeah, he has run out of soft targets. Yeah. So that's six hits. Mm -hmm. This is what, the Silver Breeze? Yeah. And two wounds. Big row. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not a big row. Yeah. That's just insult. Yeah. I guess if, you, if you're going to roll it eventually, that, that's as good a time as any. Yeah. Much rather have it there, but yeah, I'm, I'm just going yeah. to see how, how rough this flank gets. Oh, my. It's nuts. <laughs> oh. And that should take us to top of three. Um, yep, there it goes. With, if, uh, without hesitation. Go. Without hesitation. Do the Actually, phantoms I think have... probably want a phantom first because that'll. Uh, he has line of sight. <laughs> Does he have reach to the knights though? With twenty from the phantoms in the back. Nah. Oh, okay. 18, yeah, 20, I would have. Uh, about an inch you could Just move the phantoms first, and that'll push the soul flayers down. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Hmm. Although that might ruin the multi charge. Might there. push one of them out. But yeah. yeah. It, 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 it I think you're okay it losing now. soul flayers for a tree herder. You can yeah. drop one. Well, and the tokens, like, and the wind. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah. wind condition right there. Mm -hmm. well, putting a butcher yeah. flesh reaper in the front. Might as yeah. Well. And then other butchers to. Uh, I don't, think, I don't you, think you do it. I don't think you do. I think you oh. uh, leave him back and continue to do the little cat and mouse game. Uh, I think he's going. Yeah, no. So, so this is why I think. In this case, that he needs to do this because one, if he takes those tokens again, it just becomes a game of can he just hold the tokens and it doesn't even matter what happens. He could lose every unit in the game as long as he keeps that soul flare unit alive with the tokens right. and wins. The butcher's um, gonna get the tokens here. It's gonna be on the flesh ripper. Yeah, yeah, the yeah that five, that's a good yeah. good idea. That um, Don't lose it there. I think right. it's probably worth keeping it on the soul flares anyway. And when you kill the tree herder, you back up. Turn. Right after you drop it, the scarecrows pick it up and then they wander off for the rest of the game. Right. Um, it's easy. Like, the butcher's got to then get out, the flesh of Zengu, either get out of the way or pass it off on the hill, which the scarecrows have to then have to walk onto and they don't want to be doing that. Yeah. But the butcher's charging prevents the knights from getting to the soul flares. It, it gives the soul flares cover from all the shooting. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, that's, that's why I would take that charge. And I, yeah. I think it's actually the right move. He might lose them. As a consequence, but that's ex that is absolutely acceptable to win the game. <laughs> but they're gonna put like four wounds on Wilty, and that matters. Like, yeah, yeah. the little chip. There's no way to the soul flares can actually punch it. Yeah. No, the the, the other red harder butchers, I guess, moves up and to the left, and then the the void riftwalker reaper, where the so things are. Uh, they just turn right and start walking towards the other side of the board, completely unmolested. Yeah. I guess he's going to either wind blast the cab or just try to waver them through shooting, which I think is, I mean, Do it's not a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. You can get the Dredge and the Banshee as well. Yeah. yeah. You can also yeah. move the Banshee, keep it on the flank, and just keep on pushing it down the side so that. 
Um, I still would have liked to have seen the Phantoms in front just in case. Yeah. But, I mean... I'd rather lose the Phantoms and the uh, Soul Flares, but... Yeah, especially the, the Thunder Soul Flares. But I think with all the shooting involved, if Matt wants to delete the Soul Flare unit, he probably can. But... I think, I think it's reached the point of target saturation where there's not enough shooting and there's too many targets. Yeah, he's down to two regiments, one troop, and... <sighs> and they have yeah. to shoot the Soul Flares on the left this turn. Like their their next turn is going to be shooting that unit off. Yeah, they really can't go to the middle. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of leaving the um, the Rift Walkers potentially exposed. I don't know what their defense nerve is like, but it'll just move last. I think. Yeah, it's individual as well, isn't it? So. Uh, oh, no, okay. it's a monster. Yeah. It lost. Individual. It is. It is defense three and eleven thirteen. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't necessarily. Optimal. I I don't like leaving that exposed there. Um, you just turn at ninety, go five to the right. Yeah, yeah. just walk around the butchers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There we go. There we go. It used to have individual. Um, that was its old profile, and that's why it was just actively bad to take it because it yeah. is like it's a defense three battle driller that doesn't do a whole lot. Mm. Back in soul, re soul drinker reaper. Characters were like sixty-five points and amazing. Yeah, they were completely redundant. Yeah, I. All right, so here comes John shooting in round three. Do you wish that <clears throat> John's uh, target priority had managed to pick up the the Silver Breeze or whatever the. The Windborn, is that what they're? Yeah, the Windborn. The Windborn troop, yeah. Yeah, earlier, because that would be one less threat here. I always find UB likes high dice rolls. Nope, never mind. Take it back. <laughs> uh, there you back go. On the damage, though. It's all right. That's about right. That's yeah. about right. They should have done two each, though. <laughs> Windblast. So he's going to push him. Six yeah. inches. Ice push. Nice push. Bump them into the other. Uh, Nothing there. No wins. No wins. It's, it's averaged out, really, aren't it? Yeah. 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 It's got a bit. Dude. All right. And that is going to bring us, I believe, into combat. He's got the resonant chorus, which. Yeah, uh, that's what I was waiting well, for. Going. So he there can wind blast the windborn. Okay. Do you check that after the wind blast or before you start the shooting attack? Um, I oh, for, the, for the six inch thing? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah two, it's wounds. two wounds there, which may be enough to waver it. That's yeah, they're 1113. Big. Yeah, they're, they're 1113, so maybe. 1113. Oh, okay, so it's a little bit better. Yeah, Stormwind's 1416, and windborn is 1113. 10, 10, 12 is so fresh. Okay, there we go. There we go. That was big. If he lost those, then this one. I don't think he had any right. options. Okay. Five. Yeah. Does not pull a waiver. <laughs> that helps. Yeah, I mean, five wounds. Nothing to sneeze at, but at least I get to do something next time. Yeah. And that I think will bring us into combat. Looks like he's gonna start over here with soul flares. And the Silver Breeze. The less exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. Hey, Soul Flayers is so good. Yeah. this is The fact that they're within reach of picking up that unit, too. That's good. Yeah, they're picking it up. Seven. Yeah, that'll do it. That's yeah. 12 attacks is yeah. really strong for their profile. Mm. Yeah. And the fact that they're now going to threaten all that range means that... I just don't think Matt will have enough yeah. pieces effectively to to come I, back. I had the okay twenty two that had six soul flares and I'm looking back at him like, man, that's it's a lot of oomph now. Yeah. All right, so here's gonna be the flank attacks from the soul flares on the tree herder in the center. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> For two tokens. Threes and threes yeah. and threes and fours. Mm. 
Is yeah. the other reason I don't like splitting them either, because like then you can use like then you could lose this tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oof. It, it's only one over average. Yeah. It's still scary. Uh, this 17 is... wounds? Yeah, that, <laughs> that, was, that was a little bit over. Holy fuck. Fucking the bushes wasn't even needed. You all the dice today. All right, second software unit, then. <laughs> it's on Fucking snakes. Well. Yeah. Everything else is... It's only dash I mean, 18. Devastation's, you know, great if you snakes. There's another I don't even think you care. They only have, like, nine attacks, right? Yeah. Tree yeah. aren't exactly it's 27. B6. They're just tanks. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Not yeah, snakes. It is enough. All right. So now we figure he's going to drop them on, drop the tokens on what? The lower? Yeah. 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 Lower, yeah. Soul lower soul flare. Because nothing Leave. at the top of the board can touch it. He Well, yep. if he moves mm -hmm. every single unit, he we might be able to speak to the charge him at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So. Realistically, you should move this soul flare Start unit. stepping down. Now it's coming. Yeah, down. Down. There we go. And then figure what next turn, drop them and let the scarecrows pick them up. Mm -hmm. That is the plan. Yeah, yeah. Just lets them have free reign with the flyer. Yep. All soul flares can now start challenging the, uh, the backline archers as well when they charge off. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that that is the game right there. I don't. I do not think Matt can recover from that unless unless all the dice in the world just completely fall flat for John on everything mm -hmm. else from now on, and Matt's just starts spiking like nobody's business. I think from a tactical perspective, yeah, this is Matt can, John's game to lose. Matt can feasibly pick up the butchers and a soul flayer, which takes out a lot of John's hitting power. He's down to mm -hmm. two soul flayer and a, a butcher. Still, will father to deal with. Yes, uh, it is, is close to a scarecrow horde. <laughs> it has enough time to kill it. So that's only going to be three wounds. It's, it's not, not really enough. Out, but it's it's an uphill struggle now. Yeah. 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 I mean, but if the here's the thing. So so soul flayers drop the tokens, and the sit and the scarecrow horde, horde picks it up, and then the next turn, the scarecrow horde drops the tokens, and the phantoms pick them up. Phantoms pick right? up. Yeah. Or or the the. I keep forgetting what the name of the, the thing that's hiding in the back currently holding to it. Yeah, the unit that no one used to take. Yeah, that, that thing picks him up. Like, he has so many options to just keep on, to just keep on passing the ball back, keep on hiking the ball. So, you can even those tokens are, screech. It, yeah, those tokens are the gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, that Matt will never get those tokens back. Yeah, yeah. Scenario-wise, it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. John, so only three there. John, Hello. Hello. John, so how much were you bouncing in your seat when he gave you that flank? <laughs> well, with the I, I was going, oh, okay, I'll have it. Um, <laughs> if you're gonna give it to me. Uh, yeah, that was a bit that was a bit tough. I was hoping for maybe a bit more on those on the night, maybe. Um a couple of bits of bits of damage, and then put them into like a waiver plan at the time. But and also, I could have maybe chapped them up a bit. But I thought I'll, I'll take the tokens and and see what happens. Um, uh, the butchers are just kind of there to go right. Well, you're going to hit me with the wilt daddy and those guys. What are you going to have left afterwards? And then I'm just going to try and secrete the tokens out of the way as best I can. Um, the knights are hopefully damaged enough that if I hit them again with the lightning bolts. That they will be out of the game, um, but we'll see. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. To see how he deals with the guys in this flank as well, the uh, the flares. So I'm not sure if those are. Uh... Although they're hit on threes now, don't they? The great stalkers. So yeah, it would probably easy for me. Yep. Anyway, um, and yeah. So your your plan so far seems to be working. At this point, you're just going to keep. Just play, play, keep away with the tokens and see what else you can kill and keep shooting, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he's done that right. I thought he was in his front. Uh, that looked off. Um, where was he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, would, I would jump back there. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, he yeah. can't get that. 
There's no way he wasn't in the flank there. Uh, let's check it out. I mean, at least check. Maybe he's in the front. Look. Oh, that is on the line. Depends how you guys are playing. Uh, the line. Yes, well, I guess. I guess it probably won't. Yeah, fair enough. If it is, it is. Yeah. yeah. Usually, if it's usually it's if the chalk sprays up, it's a little bit behind the butchers there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Yeah. He might be able to fit though. Oh no! Oh, yeah, no that's why it could be a front there. He's not actually lined square to the butcher. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're slightly skewed. I mean, All right, John. Well, uh, nobody's got any other questions. With you. We'll let you get back to the game while Matt's lining up his charges here. Uh, good luck with the rest of the night, buddy. Oh, what's the nerve on the butcher dude? Six. Uh, it's fourteen flat. Oh, the nerve. That guy. It's dash fourteen. Yeah. Flash ripper. Yeah. The Lord yeah, he's got a chance. Gonna, well, I'm going to take all the death uh, aura that's going to hit me. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so dash dash 13 after that, and then he's got nine attacks or 10? 10. 10. And he's got 10. 10. And he's right. a 10 and a 3 crush. Uh, You're going to be giving me a game away. I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not I trying to give like away. I'm just asking stats. <laughs> I, I, I don't know that Will Father guaranteed. Like, I, I don't know that that's a guaranteed kill by any stretch. Dash 14 it's the right goal here because he's he should have the king in the side of those butchers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that what tips it. I, I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I don't know if he picks it up, though. Um, I'd be much more hopeful for him picking up the soul flares up top. I think he, he absolutely needs to pick that up in order to. That have should a shot. also happen because they're 12 14 now. Yeah. Yeah. I think he'll probably get. He, there's a good chance he'll get all three of them there, which will really help his game. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but you only need to not get one of them, and it's a, an issue. Yeah. The follow up here is though that, I mean, you still have a whole butcher horde that can shove its way in front of the Wilt Father, assuming that uh, I, the reform doesn't take him out of art. I think Matt's game plan is really going to be through the Wilt Father and this king now, because the king's going to be in the game for the rest of the game. And it can reasonably do seven wounds to everything it's wanting to touch here. Mm. I think uh, last time I played Matt, he did one shot a horde of zombie trolls with uh, Stormwind Cavs, so they can definitely pick up a Butcher Horde. They're one quite shot. scary. Yeah. They're doing like, I think, eight on average. It should get yeah. 13 good, hits. Good nerve roll. Yeah. Oh, with the Shard Blade, um, King, with the Blade of Beast there, who's an absolute monster. Yeah. yeah. That's just six wins like, yeah. on a stick. Yeah. It's very nice. I actually might be tempted to put all the Lightning Bolt into him. Um, what is he doing there? I don't agree with that. He needs to pick up the butchers this turn. That king needs to be in the middle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This takes him out yeah. of the game for yeah. two more turns after this. Even if he, even if he picks it up, he's going to have to march two turns, and the king's going to do more damage than all that shooting. Well, yep. There's there's about to be a hill in between John's entire fucking army and the two shooting units that are left. Yeah, that that Glaistar troop should have gone in there instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take the shot. You might get if you get two damage, you've got a shot away. In which case, you'll you'll pick that sorry for you. You can kill them if you do one. So, like so they're player. one box cars away. Yeah. They're gonna run it. They're gonna go down easy. I had a unit of snow foxes over the course of four turns kill a snow software unit on their own. They went in, charged, got lucky, got a double six, and then I just kept waving them for three turns until I eventually killed them. Looks like he's gonna try to shoot feet. the bottom soul flare unit. Off the table is the game plan, which I mean, you could have done that and charged the troop instead, and then yeah. just like guarantee the butchers are dead and you have yeah. a unit in play. Yeah, because like ultimately that soul flare unit, it's not required at this point. I mean, if he wavers it, that would be possibly best case scenario. You can't drop the tokens can... if you're wavered, right? No, you can um, drop them. You you can. Just... It just limits where he can drop them because he can only pivot and back up instead of being able to do fly shenanigans and just get the hell out of dodge. 
Because right now he can charge basically the entire board. So if he doesn't get picked up or wavered, then they're, okay, they're not going to be there next now. turn. Yeah, Butcher's definitely blocking line of sight. Or not line of sight, uh, providing cover, I should say. Hmm. So he's looking at six. Yeah, and like, yeah. There'd, there'd be no cover, I think, if they were off the off the hill. Undo yeah, the king. Yeah. Undo the king. Come on, Keith Randall. Yeah. Do the king. Might, <laughs> oh, might really be regret. <laughs> yeah. He's certainly backing up as much as he can. <laughs> So like let's let's say this. Let's see if both knights pick up if I, I'm gonna assume the butchers are still there. I don't I don't think the butchers die with only only the knights there. I think I think he wavers them and they, they fury counter charge next turn. That's that's yeah. my guess. The other knights do pick up the top soul flares. I assume that happens. <laughs> so so that all happens. Um maybe the Wilt Father uh spikes and picks up the butcher on top of that, which you know I I don't know if he needs a spike or what the averages are on that one, but I'm a fearless 14 is just just shocking how much he can absorb without dying. Um, he needed what sixes here? Yes, so. that's a lot of uh, ones he can roll though. Yeah, elite. Pray for elite. Three sixes. No, I don't. Uh, one this more, is so near yeah, enough. It's it's not gonna. Yeah, especially with inspiring now in the mix. Hmm. Uh, he throw the cab at them too. Yeah, Why is he yeah. hitting on fives? Whoa, whoa! Yeah, should, should be sixes. <laughs> they they must have agreed that the butchers were off the hill, but I'm like ninety nine percent confident. Oh, yeah, yeah, I disagree. With that. If they okay. said that, then that's on them. Yeah, that changes a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, all right. Yeah. I mean, heck, if that were going to be the case, I would have moved up the. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I still think he positions there to protect the soul flares, but yeah, I. Mm, yeah, I think again, they roll that again. That's them. Five will still get them. Yeah. Mm. In this case. Given that they're going to get shot like that, he wants them to die rather than just waver, because I think wavering would actually be worse in this case. Yeah, now he can drop, drop the drop tokens, the tokens but that's one all the way that you got to get through. Right. Right. You can drop them down here. Yeah. Gives them better control of where those tokens go. Or, sorry, I should clarify. Allows him to pick up the tokens next turn, whereas with them just being wavered, it's going to be really difficult to drop them and get out of the way of the Scarecrows or Butchers or whatever wants to come in and grab it. Um, Three I think he's... Elite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think John is now planning for the Scarecrows and the other Butcher Horde to basically be sacked. So he's just going to toss them in to get in the way and then he's going to run up, grab the token, and just then again to just try to keep playing, keep away. No Elite... To reroll there, so just straight to damage. <laughs> seven. Eight seven eight eight eight. Twice. All right, yeah. yeah. No. Ooh. King's going to be spending another two turns for he's in the game again. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the soul players have not got a bad shot at wavering him. Yeah. Three and three. John does need a, he does need this butcher horde to not pop. That's pretty important. Mm. Yep. So Stormwind versus Butchers. I just, Ideally, yeah, he needs well. both these units not to pop, but I think that's Stormwind the right call. Butchers. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, there's two. a lot of twos. You got twelve. Brings it back. Yeah. And then twos again. Nine. Yeah. Six nice. twice. Not bad. This needs a waiver here. Uh, yeah. 
Well, five actually, twice. He, five needs, five he needs a kill. Yeah. Yeah. Five twice with the one wound from the Wolf Father. Once. Got it. And okay. So that's yeah. You needed that. Yeah. Mm. If they wavered, that would have been worst case scenario. Yep. Well, we know where the lightning bolts are going next turn now. Yeah. And the phantoms. And the phantom. <laughs> All right. This is threatening. Although the hill's kind of in the way, so you can never want to see my creatures. Well, he can. I mean, he can sack the scarecrow horde, assuming he scarecrow horde goes into the wolf father, assuming wolf father is not uh, popping the butcher this turn, and then all the lightning bolts either pick up the knights or at least waver them. Maybe not enough hits against the butchers. Oh. Uh, I mean, three out of five go. wounds. Yeah. yeah, like I said, they're they're not they're not dying without the king. That is going to be a tall order. Yeah, but yeah, sixteen, eighteen. So boxcars. You might actually be able to. Yeah, three. They wasn't killing it with the king now. <laughs> yeah. But. Can he? Uh, what's the angle on him? Uh, whoa, back up a bit. The the butchers. They would currently be in the flank. Okay. I was going to say, that'd be... If you could get to the front there, that'd be hilarious because then he charges the butchers over there and then gets the second unit into the knights and then just starts deleting the rest of the shooting. Um, okay. So there's father against... Yeah. Against yeah. the Flesh Ripper. Four twice? No, five twice. Yeah, yeah. Come on. And there's snakes. I mean, not... not <laughs> Yeah. See, in this at this point, like, yeah, picking up the soul flares with the shooting was cute, um, but like, I think like I said, they're like, trying for everything. Yeah. Well, if he put that. the king into the butchers, I, I'd agree with that. Um. All right, and that snake eyes is going to take us to the top of turn four. I'm expecting Matt to pop back in uh, in a minute or two. Uh, Mm. John just needs to give them the phantoms a, a flank. He, to the, uh, the, he doesn't I need to stand like that. I don't even know no. that he needs to toss the phantoms there. I think he just flanks with the scarecrows. Hey, Matt, welcome back. Yeah. How about you? Uh, all right. So um, you focus fire on those uh, soul flares and got them to drop the tokens. You picked up the other soul flares, but uh, you couldn't. Pick up the butchers, unfortunately, and yeah, yeah. I had uh, a, a Wilt Daddy a snake in the middle of the table. I was really hoping to free Wilt Daddy up that turn uh, and and take off that uh, that Ripper in the middle there. That could have really made him uh, a, a pretty big danger. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if he can land it. I don't think they can do that, right? He can't make the pivot. yeah. Your cavalry sure are also in the wrong place. You're not flush. Okay, I think he thought better of it, so I won't. <laughs> um, yeah, so so uh, this one here was kind of weird. Um, I I decided I was going to give him that tree herder to try to get him to commit. Um, my my hope was to to stop just losing wounds to shooting over here and get to a point where I could just get everything fighting. Um, because he played a little cager over here than I than I was hoping he would. Um. I was trying to stay out of range. I think I tried to play a little too cute, staying out of range of Ripper or the Soul Flayers with my Cav and like, trying to let, not let him get a 20-inch charge to chaff me up. Um, I might I might have been better off just being more aggressive and pushing up and making him commit. So now I had a, a pretty weak round against those Butchers. I was hoping to, to get even... If I didn't break them, I, I know I don't have great odds to break them, but I was hoping at least to pile enough wounds on them next, so that next turn I could take them off with, with shooting pretty easily. Um... I think if you turn the knights, I might get a wilt flank. Uh, he's he's asking me to get yeah, knights rather. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, if you need to pop back. To oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, so, back in. so I have to. He's saying that I need to do this. Make them flush to the butchers. Yeah. And then they they would be here, right? Yeah. I'm slightly surprised to back up. 
the butcher last turn, but I don't remember the positioning on the soul flares if he was trying to prevent that or not. Right. I don't know. I do so. have a question for you. So why did you decide to go with the king and the soul flares instead of the glade stalker troop? The glade stalker troop doesn't do it. Um, they're on the wall. They're hindered. Like I, I don't trust them going in and doing enough wounds to 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 pop them. And he definitely kills them on the crackback, which just makes them a consistent threat over there. So like I, I really want to bring the king into the middle of the fight. But if I if I take the king to the flank, then I can take the shooting other places. My other thought was to shoot those guys on the flank, but I trust that even less. Um, seeing how well I took off that other unit, uh, you know, maybe I should have trusted it more. But but trying to shoot that unit in the middle of the fighting up there seemed more important. Um, the fact that they were up on the hill and they couldn't get cover from anything was, a, was a big deal. Um, so yeah, so, so I was hoping the King could do that in one turn and then still have enough time to get back to the fight in a meaningful way. And now it's looking like he's, he probably put himself out of the game, which is unfortunate. I don't know if he'll get back to another combat over here. If he even survives the attack back. Um, so yeah, so that did not go according to plan. Um, maybe I would have been better off just trying to throw that troop in and let the king go do more important stuff and just try to just buy time on that side and just kind of almost sacrifice that troop. And maybe they get lucky and they take them off. But like I said, I didn't really have high hopes of them being able to do it on their own. Um, yeah, okay. so I gotta my my game plan here is to try to 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 try to out combat him here, but I I don't know if it's gonna happen. And when all the fighting is done, he he probably is still gonna have more effective range than me. So I'm not loving the way this is looking. Um, my only saving grace right now is that we've got all the tokens on his side of the table. So if it comes down to it and it's a token grab, maybe I can get double points for the ones I'm able to pick up. But we'll see. Right now, I'm I mean it's I can't complain about dice. Like my shooting's been hot. Like. Yeah, it's just his list is really tough for me. Now, now looking at it, like there's not good things for me to shoot at really anywhere, and I have to focus so many shots to try to take down one thing. So yeah, that's where we're at, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, right now, it's a little up in the air. But a good turn there. If I could have like got lucky, pop those butchers, possibly pop that dude in the center. Like I, I like my chances here. But having both of those guys stick as well as they did, I, I got a lot of wounds left to do. So we'll see. All right, man. Well, good luck with the bottom half of the game. We'll see you back here when the game is over. Thank you, guys. Okay. I love having players on that you don't even have to interview. They they just answer the, all the questions on their own, and then it's like, all right, well, thanks. Cool. Well, let's get back to the game, then. <laughs> I didn't even give him, like, a checklist or anything. He just... You can come back anytime, Matt. You're, you're very easy. <laughs> All right. I guess he doesn't get cover from the Phantom, so he just lightning bolts the knights anyway, regardless. Yeah, they're high five. Yeah. I I I still think I would like to have seen the scarecrows into the flank of Wilt Daddy instead of the the um he um, may have, have provided cover to the knights. It, it would have been I would have liked to at least see it. Um because if he had done that, then now the problem is when he pops the knights, the the range now have a target, basically a target that they can realistically pick up in one round of shooting if he dedicates what's left to the phantoms, um, or at the very least he can start working on it and then pick it up next turn. Whereas with the scarecrows, he's he's not picking those up, and Oof. that means he's not charging Wolf Daddy into the scarecrows. John asked if the bottom anyway. butchers can charge very the wind. True. Ball. Yeah, we can do it now, and the phantoms will keep them from sliding over so it doesn't have to worry about the cover. And that also lands them on the token so they can pick them up. Yeah, yeah. That was a good move on uh, John's part to drop those tokens there. I think, it just gave him the most options. Yep. Yeah, I think I think the Windborn here are just barely touching the 12-inch line for the Butchers. Mm -hmm. Depends on people play it. The, he said his intent was to be out. Yeah, yeah. He definitely had to be to do it. Yeah, yeah. they're a bit odd. I think you go you go down the middle of the line is what actual is twelve inch, but depending on like the the actual angles coming off from only forty five degrees, you actually yeah. go down the middle of those lines. So it's yeah, it's, you have to give benefit of the doubt. I think unless you've made that clear. And they're nimble and had ten inches of movement. They easily could have landed. Yeah, like that. Yeah, right. yeah. just a little further now. Yeah. Riff, we have going trying to do the. Oh, Pick it up. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to get all the eggs in one basket. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if he, the physically cannot be shot at, then it's not a, it's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Fix yeah. those up and then turn and run. <laughs> Head for the pile. Does, he does need to pick up the uh, the knights this turn, though. If he doesn't pick those up, or at least waver them, like if his, if his shooting round is subpar, then... I don't know that there's going to be enough turns for it to matter. Yeah, The Mind Screech can become Chaff now. Like, there's yeah, yeah, like yeah. flying Chaff. Oh, yeah. Or Token Care. I mean, yeah, he, he has options. Yeah. They're 13, 15 yeah. defense floors, so they can live through a little bit. It's not that easy to shoot them off. Yeah. John, move your Banshee forward, John. You've got Dread. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yep. is that. It is hard. It is... That that rule is sometimes hard to remember on that specific unit, just because uh, yeah. it's it's counterintuitive since it's a shooting unit. You don't want to move it that close most of the time. One of five hits, three wounds, three wounds. What's them at much, eight? Much more willing to be forgiving for. Uh... He might just enthrall them. Oh, that's another option. Uh, no, he's going for wind blast. He's making sure. Yeah, I am. I might have just risk, risked it and gone for um, force, Windborn force and the uh, Glaze Darkers and just risked it. One more. Only one more. Uh, so that's going to be a seven twice. Seven will pop and a five will waver. Yep. Pretty good chance on a waver. Yeah, the yeah. enthrall, you would get five attacks instead of eight. But if you get two yeah. successes, you're in dread, so you're adding one win that way. Yeah. And if you do enough, it might pull you out of inspiring. That's a seven. Once. That'll, that, that will get them. And that is <laughs> box like cars. Yep, here we go. Oof. Well, but like right. I said, this, this is where I, I would almost like to not see the phantoms there, because... Like I said, just open season for the shooting. If he can shoot phantoms, who cares at this point? Yeah, I'd almost rather he shoot the phantoms than anything else. I don't know that. Well, if they live, they charge. If they die, yeah. they die. Oh, sure. Eleven hits. <laughs> oh, oh no, God. eight wounds. <laughs> Oof. Oof. And the king is what? 13, 15? Yeah. yeah. So seven twice to pick him up. It's gonna be a waiver. Oh, five to waiver. No, and no, not a waiver. He lives. He will live. He is live to punch back. He is mind screech bait now, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. What? What is the? It's top of four. Yeah, I, he's top just four, not. Yeah. He just won't be able to get to anything by the end of the game unless there's a turn seven, and probably not even then. Mm. Oh, flesh ripper on will father. Four hits. No wounds. Yeesh. Well, Father can surge. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's, there's all the scarecrows. Don't forget the scarecrows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kelf is a bane five, chant now. Fives and six. Ooh, right. My kingdom for a bane chant. Just, just that one horror running around with the vicious aura and bane chant, you'd be well happy. Eleven. Three, three, three wounds. You yeah. can't kill him. Damage is damage. So if they said the butchers still aren't on the hill, that flesh ripper can be killed pretty easily. Hmm. He's got dread. The flesh ripper, doesn't he? Does he? Does he? Does he? Yeah. Yeah. He, he might. I think it's the dread fiend that has uh, the butcher. Oh, no. yeah. 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 yeah, dread fiends do, butcher guy does not. But he has mm -hmm. the very nice nerve. He might be just in six of the riff weaver. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Okay. That seems, giving dread to the Rift Weaver that seems somewhat sarcastic since it's the least scary thing on the board. <laughs> Nine hits and. Was that eight wins? Very scary is that Rift Weaver. Yeah. Six wins. Six wins and a five roll, 11. They'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Yep, but damn it. the risk damage. of not popping, uh, popping the butchers again now, isn't there? Yeah. Well, yeah. Without the thunderous and no vein champ, you're gonna yeah. have to put something else in to help, and you can't afford not to. 
14 on the flank from the cab. Probably or... put the troop in. Yeah, I would do the troop. Hmm. Well, you might just take the risk because it's already going against you and hopefully it goes through this time. Yeah. Yeah. That I mean, bottom of turn four. If the windborn try to run for it, it's it's what 13, 15 on the the dread dread thing hiding in the back. Mm. Um, yeah. We the seven thirteen, I think. One thing that is uh, pretty eleven key thirteen, is yeah. John and the are defense first. So John yeah. went first. So like, if we're talking bottom six and all four tokens are on the whiff weaver, if he peels enough cover off, yeah, he might be able to just shoot all the tokens off. Yeah, that's that's and like just I'm just draw this. trying to find feasible paths for victory for Matt here, and I'm like, if if he moves the the cab forward and then gets on the hill, dodges everything, and starts shooting it, yeah, yeah, yeah. looks like he's got the same <laughs> thought process. It'd have, it have to be turn six and then not get picked up yeah. by the, the screeches on a on a seven, right? But because that's the follow up problem mm. here is the screeches now, like everything that's left is just super juicy for them. Mm -hmm. As long as John doesn't throw all three screeches into troops again. <laughs> yeah, they're still really good. I don't. I think yeah, my, my screeches are still awesome. I think they could do with dropping a height off them. And yeah, I'd be yeah. happy then. I think dropping because especially because the model's not that tall. It really We're dropping uh, flying, honestly, I think would help too. Just limiting their ability to reposition somewhat. Flies what makes them so good. I mean, oh, yes. I yeah, they, they, they do kind of have And the Lightning Bolt 6, Height 4, Nimble. I, I don't yeah. even rate the Lightning Bolt 6 as much. Like, you have to take three in order for it to be that good, but it's their utility. Right. Like, they're just such an all around package for 150 points. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I normally run I've, two, and at two, I use Wind Blast a lot more than I use Lightning Bolt. Sure. But they have that flexibility. Like, that's the yeah. thing. You can you can do so many things with them. And at the end of the I, game, they're scoring units, which You is could great. drop one die off each spell, and I think they'd be fine. Yeah. Make them fives around instead of sixes. All right. We are playing push, and currently, John is holding four out of the five tokens, and Matt has one. On the Wolfhather in the middle. They they are also super susceptible to Hex, which mm -hmm. is starting to work its way into the meta, at least in the US. I don't know about the UK, but Yeah, you've seen it you've seen it more and more. I had um for my Clash of Kings, obviously that was previous cock, but I had Trixus Wand yeah. on then and I forgot that even back then it was you can't move um, yeah. on a cat. And that was I forgot the entire um, tournament, but just using it as it was was good. Uh, yeah, and then obviously people started picking up after, so it made, it made a couple of appearances at the Masters, and obviously now we're in it affects everything, especially since there's uh, a lot. Any time you play Empire of Dust, it's always there. useful because the Soul Snare is just a bastard of the highest order. Yeah, um, so I think it's going to get picked up a lot more now. I was a lot of the time my Rodi list. The only change it's going to really make is I'm going to have one of them with Hex now. It's, yeah, because well, well, like, a, a Wizard on Peg with Hex is just great. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, a hard counter to stuff like this, because it ultimately comes down to, like, you can hex one of the three Mind Screeches and the other two Lightning Bolt, your hex cast, caster right back. Yeah. But, yeah. but it, I'd also it does just help. shoot Mind Screech anyway. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the movement it, part that hex hurts. Yeah. The hex, it's the hex not is the it's, it's, it's stuff like Soul Snares, which are just ruined. Um, yeah, it's it stops you from like you can't line about with your battle shrine because you need it to move up your main lines, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can't afford to lose rallies. It's those kind of units. It's not for picking one out of the three, really. It helps, but it's it's for those big it, casters. You would hit the banshee much more than the three. Yes. Points. Oh yeah. In yeah. this yeah. list, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Banshee, banshee gets hex bones cast anyway and takes about twenty damage. From where is it like eight and nine? Like, uh, Moonblast she's on, she's on eight Windblast, so she'll be taking 16 Moonblast hits and doubles damage back. On the That'd be good, yeah. If it gets too, because I mean, just yeah, restricting the movement is huge on that type of character. Mm. 
I've seen Hex come in a lot more now, which is nice because nobody used it. Yeah, yeah. Shame you don't see as much weakness either. Weakness is a really underrated spell. I think Scorched Earth is kind of taking its yeah. spot. Yeah. Unless they take yeah. it, because Hindered is just really good. I, I, I mean... They effectively do the same, but like if you can make them Hindered and then they lose their Thunderous, so you're getting a weakness and a minus one to hit. Yeah. It has a little bit more applications. I think they're both situationally useful, which is yeah. probably the reason I see them less than I see Hex, because there's there's a lot more cases where I'm like, I would like to have Hex in, in my list to deal with yeah. this type of list, versus I there's just some where I'm like... Weak, like Bane Chant Weakness Horror, because Weakness in Night Stalkers is incredible, because you yes. can just go to like Late Stalkers and be like, nah, you have negative one piercing, and... I think More the real nine. problem with I think the real problem with Scorched Earth is that I'd rather save those twenty points and buy a caterpillar on unit instead. Um, yeah, usually picking Scorched Earth is the last thing you're doing in your list. Like you're picking Scorched Earth, yeah. heck, just to round the list out. And I think, I think just it's just in it. that same spot as weakness. Yeah, because that's probably right when you're taking weakness too. Yeah. Or you just run Ratkin and take Tangle, who just has weakness four. I hate that thing so much. <laughs> <laughs> Another good target for Hex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. E yeah. Extremely good target, especially because it wants to move around the Fury Aura. Yeah. Mm. I, had it, I had like three turns fighting with Seductress once, and Seductress lost something. <laughs> I want to comment more, but I'm also like. Tangled being up a Seductress. Right, Greg. Okay, so he, he put Will Father into the. The scarecrows. scarecrows. I think that's yeah. the right call. Yeah, yeah. You have to off. If we know mm. the butchers aren't on the hill, you need one wound on the flesh ripper, and then it's on snakes. Yeah. yeah. He did send the the troop into the flank of the butchers, the blade stalker troop, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. No, that's that's, that's right the right call there too. Yeah. Yeah. Since since the since the stormwind only have thunders and it's been stripped. Yeah, yeah, it's now 36 attacks, threes and fives elite. Yeah. Should yeah. do something. If if mm -hmm. he picks those up, he can also pivot the troop to block off, to basically get the cab fresh for the following turn yeah. and block off the butchers. So yeah, this like one, I think I'd have done the Windborn on them. Yeah. I, I'm a little disappointed to not see the Windborn try to start wounding. He got his one. Just the one. Just the one. Yeah. Just the one. Right. So all, all right, all that's all he needed, so he can shoot something else now. Yep. But that's the I like to got both regiments into the phantoms. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is he saying he could have seen that? He's definitely not seen it with those. Definitely can. Mm -hmm. At this point, they have to shoot the other butchers. Over the butchers, yeah. then. Yeah. Not a bad shout to be fair. Oh, he, he got it as well on. Um... Yeah, wow. Okay, six hits. That's a lot of wind blast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he had spell ward aura up as well, so he needed fives to hit. Yeah. <laughs> and did yeah. two wins just on top. And he can roll up box cars there and just lock them down. Like, it, that could happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He gets and he spikes the nerve there. He's really got to pick up the scarecrows though. Only one to... wind on the phantoms. Yeah, so it's gonna be the ten twice to pick them up. That's... Yeah, yeah. There's another nerve checks coming around. Looks like he's gonna do the butchers first. Half Seven. Way. Yeah. And the flesh ripper should be easy. Yep, picks him up. Yep. The rolled snakes like he did last turn. <laughs> phantoms, if the phantoms survive, that's gonna be pretty big. Yeah. And they do. Uh, and this is my one. Yeah. Yeah. Dash dash fourteen is is chunk. Is there any brutal? Well, I guess Earth. Up. They don't have Earth on else. There's no brutal or dread in Sylvankin, right? Uh, mm, not that I know. I mean, Cloak and Dash is the green... better than dread anyway. But well, you can take the green lady's thing. 
Like you want them to work together. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you could take the green light. That's another cloak of death in it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Specifically, one. five. Brutal or dread. Uh, should do it this time. Yep. Yep. Okay. But mostly, again, King King will spend. I guess you sidestep, right? <laughs> yeah. Get what movement you can. You speed six, right? Seven. Oh, yeah, seven. Okay. That at least helps a little bit. Or back up, I guess. Back up two inches, yeah. Yeah. I, I still don't think. I mean, he can't march through the. Through the Ops to the wall. That's why I was saying go down. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. He might be just thinking, yeah. I'm just going to double through the forest and get inspiring back on my late stalkers. Yeah, yeah. Could be. Knights uh, on Butcher has got three. This is rolls. the roll he needed last turn. <laughs> 16 hits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. then. Uh, but needing five is the wound. So five. five. Yeah. That should get yeah. him down now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 12, so that's even, what, a 6 twice before the troop hits? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still think he wants the troop in there just to secure the kill, because if he wavers them again, then he's really in trouble. Mm. 20. 16 hits, should do another 5. Six. Yeah, yeah. Should, should be snakes. See it. Or three. But three is enough. Right. Yeah. Still still puts him in the, the snake zone. Why do you think they were melee four? See hmm. not rolling like they're melee four? Oh okay. Yeah, no, he is only rolling like they're melee four. Yeah. They are. Oh they are. They're melee four. The blade stalkers? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the um, it's normal normal elves that got melee three. Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah. What one of them is melee three? I know that. Uh, I think it's the Twilight Kin one. That sounds right, but I honestly really? don't remember. Normal elf ones are, aren't they? I have no idea what the normal elf ones one, and I honestly don't <laughs> remember what the Twilight Kin ones ended up being by the end of their playtesting. My years of crying for diversity hurts me here. <laughs> So do you flank with the phantoms into the knights at this point? Mm, I think you no. I think you just mind screech them. I think the phantoms go for the wimborn. Mm -hmm. The mind screeches go for the calf. He can't. They have to be able he to. might not be able to see the wind. I don't know that he can see the windborn around the other. He can't check it. Yeah. From there, yeah, over, yeah, you can get yeah. the, uh, just, uh, just over the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I think your banshee moves forward in front of both of the. Um, Great stalkers and just pushes both of them, mm -hmm. both of them back hurts both of them, and then you'd have to keep moving the great stalkers back forward under the cover to be able to have a shot again. I think like turn. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to depend. On, does Wilty one shot these scarecrows? <laughs> yeah, if he it's going to inform a lot of the turn. Yeah. yeah, I'd be. I mean, what they're they're dash twenty one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd have to roll pretty hot here. He should do <sighs> seven, eight wounds. It's not yeah, seven. If you do, it does seven, he needs a seven twice. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's doable. Um, but no, <laughs> so, yeah, it's one of those because two uh, two damage under, then he needs a nine twice, and that's very not doable. Well, yeah, yeah, he we'll got ten. And it's very, very doable. Wilty's very yeah. streaky. That's the wrong Oof. way. Yep, uh, he does four, so he will need a ten twice. Which is still, I mean, nerve is nerve, so let's see it. Nope. No, no. No. Not on that. So. Nope. Does that get the butchers that, a flank then? I don't you know, think. Do you even need to? Yeah, no? I think you, yeah, I think you. Do you even need to do that? Yeah. I mean, if he, if they can he gets fit. it, sure. This should be able to. He could also he just did. back the scarecrows up to yeah. give him the flank if he wants it. Also true. Yeah. yeah. He, Which he's got quite a few options there. Um, the what I was also thinking is that the scarecrows then declare a charge on the wolf pile, they go back into the flank. The mind screech walks in front of him, the butchers then go into the troop. The other mind screeches go for the cav, your phantoms go for the windborn, and then everything of his is tied up. Yeah, there's no possible way of stopping him. 
Uh, so it looks like they're taking a quick two minute break. We've got the clocks paused. We are at the top of turn five. John's got 26 minutes on his clock. Matt's got 16. Alan says the other two Blade Stalkers hit on threes. Okay. So yeah, that, yeah, that tracks. The regular Alpha and the Twilight Kingdom? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So it's just these ones then. Yeah, because I can't remember what it was, but Twilight King lost steady aim, gained a melee, and gained a respective hammer and measure pass. Yeah. Right. And the attacks, obviously, very well done. Only in melee now, too, I think, because they used to, at some point they had the shooting was on hammer measured force shooting, which was funky. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be cool. It, was, yeah. it may have just been for it's players, melee only now. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The I also didn't mind the, the hammer measured force for ranged either. It was interesting, but I don't think it was particularly busted. But the dwarf players grumble too loud, you know that. Sure, sure, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's anyone who has, like, the really high defense stuff, but, like, you're running the defense for him, is just like, oh, huh, okay. Oh, Ice can have Glade Stalkers, too. I forget those exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those aren't Frost Elementals. What are you talking There's about? There's so much <laughs> shit in that list. I was so like we did the play test and I was so disappointed by asking them as I hate them so much. I'm happy that they're a little bit better now. Mm. But I want Frozen to apply on the hit rather than the damage. Yeah. I'm pretty bad. Yeah. And Sean, to answer your comment, um, this is COVID land. Podcasting time is at a minimum because I don't drive anymore. So, no, I did not listen to your very in-depth review of Sylvankin. <laughs> I have so many podcasts backed up to listen to. Like, yeah. The next, the, the next GT, when, when is that? March, pilgrimage, end of March? Yeah, I easily have stuff to listen to the whole way up and back. Just because, same thing, don't go anywhere anymore. Don't need a commute. All right, top of five. Let's see it. <laughs> Love you, Sean. John has put the <laughs> phantoms into the cab instead of the windborn. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't think it's still doable. He want, I think he wants the butchers into the uh, Wilt Father just to make sure that dies. Yeah. I don't hate it. I mean, they, they have a good chance to get the cab too, don't they? They're like, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, at this point, you just mind screech off the troop. You know, you're just yeah. going for that instead. Yeah. But now he just mind screeches all the shooting off. So even if he loses the phantoms in the following turn, it's not not the end of the world. Because this is the big thing. Is, yeah, the, the scarecrows just. Like, ooh, I I don't like that. I would just stay behind the hill. There's They're no right reason there. to expose himself. They're high too. Yeah, so the infantry hack. Yeah. Right. So the scarecrow. Well, I guess I'll have one more turn to, to get away if the scarecrows pop from shooting or something weird. Despite how it looks, we are not playing dominate. We are actually playing push. <laughs> You've got nice little carousel of units here as they're all. It does. Fucking. Ring around the Wilt Father. Yeah. Ring around the Wilt Father. <laughs> the Wilt Father's in the middle. <laughs> Trying to see how far he can march it. For no, okay. I was like, it doesn't have nimble, right? It does, but it what does, could the token? Ah, uh, the token strip it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You can tell how often I get to use nimble units with the tokens playing a surge <laughs> army that can't even fucking march with them. <laughs> I just got so happy to rediscover that you can do the whole chariot drop and pick up trick again now that legions are functional. <laughs> Move forward, you drop them at the front of the unit, and then move forward seven inches, pick it up. It's <laughs> 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 the only unit in this game that can do it. And the only unit that can is because every other unit can at least march 10, so it's only Empire of Dust uh, chariots that actually give that. That's good. I like that. 
All right. So he's got, <laughs> yeah, pick oh, up two. the truth there. Yeah. Because like the, but... yeah, the worst case scenario here is that somehow the the Silver Breeze or Wind Windborn Windborn Cab get around the corner and then snipe the snipe the tokens off, but they just picks them all up with mind screech. Screech. Mind screech. Yeah. yeah. So as long as he doesn't lose whatever it is on the bottom of you know bottom of six or bottom of seven, he should be fine. Mm. And with Windblast coming into the picture, it's going to be really hard to stay in in range for what's left. Bro, use your buddy. Oh, no, you don't tease it. Do you? you find a rift walker thing, does it? That's fine. Yeah, yeah no, you're okay. You're safe, John. You're safe. <laughs> I can already see Tom's like six page analysis. He's going to send to John like D plus. You won, but D plus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get better, though, is you, you watch these back and you're just like, okay, so like these, these were the things that I did right, these are the things that I did wrong, you know. Uh, one screech going right. for the regiment of great stalkers. I, I would argue the, the best way to get better at Kings is to lose. Like, you're, you, you know, you lose and then you learn something every time. And so, yeah. yeah. So long as you've learned something. So long as yeah. it's not just, well, my dice completely betrayed me. I've learned that I need to buy new dice. Yeah. <laughs> I have learned ones are bad and sixes are good. <laughs> if there's anything you've learned from Kings. <laughs> roll nine and up for nerves. Roll, is what I've roll dice better. Yeah. yeah. Does he switch in targets here? I don't know that I like doing that. Uh, I think he I might just be checking for cover. I think he's just checking cover. I hope he's just yeah, yeah. I would this is one of the few times where I'd be like, yeah, this is it's acceptable to put the troop on at least four. Yeah. You don't want to risk an eight to waver. Like that's yeah, that's not enough. And you have the okay. banshee to, to wind blast the cab to do damage there, so yeah. Ugh. Well, cover didn't matter. Cover didn't matter. Six one. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's a seven to waiver now, so it's got so now, 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 do you enthrall or wind blast to make sure, or do you switch over to the windborn calf? I would still do the windborn calf. I'd rather take the two shots to waiver. I don't, I don't think one troop on its own is scary enough to threaten them. What? Well, well, actually, I don't mind a wind blast if they can go past the butchers. Yeah, and their only target would be the one line screech. So I think they can go straight past the butchers. They can. Yeah, they can. And since yeah. they're within an inch to start, as long as they end clear, they should be fine. Yeah, it looks like he's going for the windborn. Hey, that's the double tap. It's yeah. not a bad yeah, yeah, play yeah. either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. I'd yeah. rather maximize damage than it's probably the right option. That's a good point. If you wouldn't blast the, the troop, you don't have anybody to double tap on. Yep, yep. Nice. Good roll. That's a better roll. That should probably be a dead dead troop, or at least wavered. They are 1113. <laughs> and putting it on the fence means it's not marching next turn. So that's <laughs> blown, blown into inspiring though, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's see. Seven here. He needs the first. 11 to do anything. Yeah. That's yeah, a good, good time, time to get the three. Very good three. time for that one. Troop looking They're for fine. nine. Just oof. Yep. Need the seven to waver. Missed it by one. Yeah. You'd rather be Windborn. nice. Windborn needs a seven twice to pick him up. Even a waver here would be good. Ten would pick him up. And five oh, waiver. Oh, I've got it. Yeah. Just five waivers. It's quite yeah. important, isn't it? I think if you're Matt, you're okay with this because he's going to have yeah. to do it, shoot it again. It's going to just take more time. Hmm. Uh, eh. Yeah, it takes it away yours. One of the only units that can actually reach the tokens at this point. Yeah. Because the regiments aren't going to, like, the regiments are basically irrelevant next turn. Even if he picks up the scarecrows, yeah. 
because there's just there's just a hill there. <laughs> like there's a hill. <laughs> like All right, so there's two combats. The Phantoms are in the flank of the Storm and Cav. The Butchers are in the flank of the Wolf Father, and the Scarecrow are in the front of the Wolf Father. Yeah. So that is not a lot of hits. It's only five wounds, I think, from the Phantoms. Three wounds. Three. Three wounds. Oh, that's right. There's twice. After oh, the red. dread. Yeah, dread probably getting in there. Six once, and twice. Then, yep. And that gets it. Even if they were real knights, they'd still be on a seven. So. Yep, that would still go. So that picks up the cav and frees up the phantoms. He's out of range of the. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. The faulty dies here. I, if he's not outside of twelve, he moves forward. Yeah. It. Oh, butchers and the world father. In the flank. In the flank. Fours and fours. Nineteen hits on thirty-six. All right. Yep. Eight wounds. Eight. Eight. That's up in the, the danger father. zone. Up to fourteen. It's actually, it's mm. almost fifteen with twice. red. With dread, yep. It's up to the sky, crows. That's good. You know, they don't need to do much. Just, 13, a, just a couple here. Two more. Two rooms. That's good enough. Snakes. Solid contribution. Yep. It's just enough with dread. I had, four is still really good, but <laughs> yeah. No, dread, dread does matter. Dread does matter. All right. That will pick up the wolf father and give uh, John the last token. And more importantly, the butcher's reform means he can't like late stalker around to the mind screech. And try mm -hmm. to just get him in there. He puts the token on the scarecrows here, right? Not the butchers. I think you put him on the butchers. It's easier to kill the scarecrows at this point. Yeah. Yeah, but with shooting, not melee. Like, I'm thinking maybe he charges all his stuff out of the trees in the melee, kills the butchers mm, in combat, and picks it up. Yeah, that I, that's what I was thinking. I think you just take the risk and put both Great Stalker regiments in and go for broke. Yeah. Yeah. John has maybe one more turn, I, mean, I don't think he cares. <laughs> sure. I mean, ultimately, I think I think John is one. But if he puts that's, it on the Scarecrows, the, now, so here's the thing the worst case scenario is Scarecrows get shut off, sure, but then the token's still not in that sense. Right. Yeah. Like, then a mind screech The main thing is if the butchers get killed in melee, then you just kill the unit that killed them. I mean, like, you, you could... You can kill them with any of these. Yeah, with with the mind screech in play, absolutely. I was going to say, without mind screeches, you could conceivably do some movement shenanigans after the kill to, like, you know, shuffle the token and into the troop or something, hide it. It's not likely they'll kill the butchers in melee. Because you can only right. get two units in there. I mean, yes. Matt is looking for like the haliest of Hail Marys. It's gone from like bad to worse to like the game has been over for several turns, in my opinion. But yeah, he's it's, it's, it's had to ch chase bad options each time to get back into the game. And if you don't get yeah. it, then it's just going to be worse and worse yeah. and worse. This, this game was. I think it is the play. Yeah. This, this game was over when uh, the flank on the tree herder happened. Yeah. Yeah, when he stepped up on the hill a turn yeah. before he needed to. That, that was the decider. I'm not going to say that's when the game was over. I think it was the following turn when he failed to kill everything he touched. I think that's, <laughs> that's when you lose it. Because if the butchers were dead, yeah, they didn't take an extra turn. Sure. He, he killed, I, what, like one out of three things that he really needed to? Right. Yeah. And it locked the Wilt Father in. And I think at that point, if he had actually killed everything there, it, he would have had a chance. Yeah, because the cav would have had one more good charge. I think he needed the the king. That's that's what this comes down to as well. Yeah, if the king had been in this fight, it'd have been a, a different program. Yeah, and sure. like if the soul like the soul flayers are still over there fighting the troop or kill the troop, who cares at that point? Like the win condition is the tokens. You could lose every single fucking thing in this on that side of the board. Who gives a shit as long as he's got tokens at the end of the game? I'm fairly sure what he's doing. He can put the great stalkers up on three damage all the way down to the very end. 
Because they would pick up at their up. final spot. Yeah, yeah. They go to their final position first, then you then you move the chargers. Now I I don't know that he can still make contact. That that'll be interesting to see here. Be a pretty tight charge. Did the butcher yes. just get six wins for free? <laughs> just be there. He might just be is, marking their spot. Yeah. This this is where you you just create additional units so you can see the final positions. Yeah. Use, he use those templates. He yeah. should be able to. Uh yeah, if he goes straight forward, it'll be a it's it's gonna be really tight. I think that would work. I think if you move forward and then pivot, there's there should be a pivot that gets that corner in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he's got it. Coming up on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have Eric Schaefer versus Tom Annis at about 8.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Very, very, very late in the UK. Sorry about that. But uh, you guys can watch it next day. Uh, let's keep your eyes open for that. Yeah. It's funny, I saw that and I literally my head went. I think every single dojo player I've commentated a game on except for Tom. <laughs> and Dustin, because he doesn't UB. Sure. But, uh... All right. Looks like we are moving on to combat. Here's the troop on the scarecrows. Six uh, it's only three wins, though. Only three wins, yeah. Only spot in there by at least. Yeah. True. That gets uh, seven. Uh, that, seven. That, yeah. that does pick him up. Only gets eight All token. Right. All right. <laughs> this is the Hail Mary Pass. Let's see if it goes. Yeah. Yeah. He really needs to pick up the Butcher Horde. Yeah. Uh, if he picks only... up the Butcher Horde. Then you drop the tokens, you charge out, and I think you're still fine. Yeah. I mean, he, he might also just be able to hide it behind all the mind screeches because they're taller than that yes. thing is, isn't it? Yeah, he can just hide yeah. it behind mind screeches. Yeah. yeah. He just creates a wall. Even on the hill, he can't see over him. Yep. It's uh, 16 hits, and he's got some. Eight. Picks eight. up a couple more. The six. It's, it's a shot. It's a good shot. Nice. Yeah. These fives. See it. 18. 18 on fives. Six. Six. That's about right. Yep. It's nine. It's not bad. So that's what a nine wants. That's Ooh. not it. And that is a three. Yeah. yeah. So the butcher's stick. Yeah. Now now it's now it's definitely no no questions. Yeah. If he popped the butchers, I would have been like, maybe. Like the again, there's there's like always that slim chance. Right. Yeah. yeah. We run for the hills. Yep. Eat off. Yep. yep. Yeah. Turn seven doesn't save him now. Doesn't doesn't matter. Nope. Just get in the way of everything. Yeah. The charge them. They can't shoot. Butchers counter charge the bottom regiment. Uh, yep. Phantoms. Phantom. And the plan the one right there, and then uh, Banshee finishes off the king and the, the, the stormman. Yep, yeah, he might actually just table him here. Yeah, so mop up at this part. I if he doesn't table in this turn, then turn seven, he definitely will. <laughs> on an optimization thing, you could just put one mind screech in front and an inch away. The lightning bolt's better than their combat, so you don't yeah. need to, you don't want him sidestepping and getting shot off. This guarantees the the prevents it's shots. One yeah. extra dice and crush one, basically. <laughs> so you're losing that. I I'd rather take six dice on twos. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, optimal play isn't even required by John at this point. He's got, he's, <laughs> he's it's so far ahead. But it's also because they fly. Like you can do, you can box them in. Like yeah, there's yeah. a lot you can do with them there. Yeah, they're very good. Like King, Kings is a game of inches, is that that saying right? And it's like 
that kind of goes for like the, the balance of it, right? Like you start off and you get like a little, a little bit of a, a lead because like you see a tiny mistake or a tiny bit of positioning advantage and then like, or maybe a tiny bit of a list, you know, matchup advantage. And then you, you slowly like just bits at a time start seeing like the differences pile on until it's just like, yeah. No wounds. That's impressive. Right, here comes the chorus. All Matt needs is for him to roll like that for the remainder of the game. Never mind. And turn seven. <laughs> <laughs> so now I've hit, hit some falls. Never mind. Yeah. Woo. And that pushes him back way out. There's... It was a yeah. long bomb attempt to, if he didn't get any hits at all and that king survived, he gets to chain into the Banshee over and then maybe get the Void, uh, the Rift Walkers on the final turn, but not him all. So, oh, and the one damage. I I still stand by this. I, I think he should have shot the Banshee on like his first turn with everything they could have shot the Banshee. It was, the Banshee move is so key to this game. Yeah. I think the I think probably where it went wrong was the um, windborne not covering the flank of the tree herder and wind blasting the banshee in one turn and just hoping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When he had committed that he was going to lose the tree herder, uh, and pushing him forward was enough pressure to force John to have been aggressive there, rather than yeah, yeah. having to suicide. Oof. That picks up both the king and the windborne. Yeah, yeah. That banshee has been absolute money. Yeah. Right. Expensive, but worth it. Uh, in this, yeah, in this game, it's been and it's been pivotal. It's so matchup dependent too. Yeah. Because you see a kingdom's man with no light bolt, and it's like really hard to use her. Hmm. Not a great roll there. They're good. Mm, Fourteen, sixteen. Yeah, they're fine. So mm. it will not be a tabling this turn. Hold up. Okay, no, he can't slide past there. I was about to say, uh, Ooh. That. yeah, that, that would be yeah, yeah. Ooh, it'd be hilarious, but but yeah. Another not great roll. I don't think he's getting either of them. Uh, six wounds there, or, let, or nine plus. It's seven. Okay. All right, yeah, it's, it's not a bad shot. <laughs> now sidestep just to make it perfectly yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, ju just to make it clear so there's no confusion. But you should not absolutely pass. not have to do anything. Sidestep, if anything, to prevent a flank is yeah. why you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think you can fit there anymore, so now it should nah. be good. Yeah. Because it's... Uh, what four inches deep for no 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 it's uh 80, 80 millimeters it's about three less than three inches yeah three less than three inches space so. and it's an easy pickup with an eleven <laughs> yep all right then that has one unit uh I think the action is you counter charge the phantoms and then then the game is over. I might even just say, screw it. I'll try to swing for the butchers. They're 200 points. He, he can't. <laughs> he can't. He's in the flank he, and he can't fit. Oh, can right, you disengage. can disengage, can you? Uh, since yeah, he's in only, the... He's since he's being flanked, right. yes. He could disengage, withdraw one inch, but because he ends the withdrawal within an inch, I'm not... Sure. Well, he's charging, so he could. He yeah, yeah. He, charge. he can't do that. Yeah, because he can't do that. That's a teleport. He do that. Yep. He's too smart for that. That was bad. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, he definitely can't fit. I, I do think Tom is correct that he could have withdrawn and charged the front, though. Um, it would have been tight, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. No problem. All this is irrelevant outside of attrition, assuming that's... Well, dash 12, the seven, 7 will pick him up. Yeah. 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 Uh, now a roll for turn seven, although 
Cool. Consolidation prize. There is there is no scenario where you, where you win this match. There's <laughs> there's one scenario where John just says eh, and just drops the tokens. Yeah, John, right. unless John literally <laughs> just decides. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it, I'm that is drop game. all the tokens. Yeah. That will be game. Yeah. Uh, so that is a very solid victory for John. Um, what are they doing for call arms? Are they doing blackjack or blackjack. is it Northern Kings? I think this well, no, one's probably. It's, it's always been Northern Kings before because it was part of the Adam Pavley's tournament. Because it was Adam, so that's right. Yeah. Hey. All right. And Northern Kings hate blackjack. Northern, yeah. <laughs> hey Northern guys. Don't prefer blackjack. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, that was a great game. Thanks for letting us watch it. Um, congrats yeah, it to uh, congrats to John on the win. Um, here in round four of Call to Arms. Um, yeah, I got, yeah, I got a little so, turn, a turn seven mercy there. We didn't roll the seven, so he couldn't completely table me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How dare he deny me? I needed, I needed the extra point. <laughs> so yeah yeah it was a it was a good one like this this is the list that i'm most scared of like this is the list that i fear the most because typically what i'm trying to do to look to do with my army is is neuter your shooting like if you've got a way to affect me from range i'm looking to leverage my stealthy and and target off your your range stuff and with his army i, I simply can't get his range stuff like even if I bring everything that I have in my army to bear to shoot on, like mind screeches, but like mind screeches in woods, like Banshee with individual. Oh, that Banshee's a nightmare, by the way. He's really, really strong. <laughs> That's an awesome piece. Uh, I didn't know yeah. that there was that ability even in the game, but yeah, I don't yeah. think that there's a Night Stalker list out there that shouldn't be running that Banshee because she is fantastic with the Zephyr Crown. There's definitely. See, it's Joey's <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Shakira personally. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I, yeah I like the Crush Three Strider Flyer. Yeah, it, it opens up so many melee builds for Night Stalkers with her. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the big but problem with the Banshee is, is as soon as you see like two Mind Screeches, the mirror match, it's miserable. Yeah. She just dies. Yeah, she just gets lightning bolted off. Yeah, because yeah, her her individual her stealthy doesn't mean anything. Doesn't and count. Yeah. Yeah, so she's a, I guess she does twelve. Really I mean, he's yeah. packing tricksters wand in the list, which isn't any good against me because I'm I'm running caster list. But like, I guess you know that kind of gives him a little bit of defense to try to protect her from lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, lightning bolts and stuff. I would I'd be trying to keep it next to the um, uh, what's it called the uh, the horrors. Uh, sorry, the rift weavers because the spell yeah. aura and trying yeah. to keep her in cover. So it'd be in sixes to hit, so that's a big change on when you're hitting those guys. And then you obviously got the hex there for dealing with stuff like mind screeches. Because the as you say, the anti stuff is either mind screeches or, or other lightning bolt, or it's gonna be um hex. Oh, hex. Uh, imagine playing against me with hex and going, yeah, I'm gonna you're gonna use two wind blasts in a turn. I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I was going, yeah, like I said, his his list is uh, is the one that I want to come up against the least. Um there are are not a lot of a lot of other armies that shoot that that can outrange me and out stealthy me and and he's one you know how much do you think the first turn was a big impact you know i was i was actually thinking that if if i had won the roll for first turn there's a good chance i actually let you take the first turn because my shots in the first round are so bad and i have to come out of cover to get them so i'd i'd rather almost give you the first turn and make you come out of cover to get me so that I can get better shots in the, in the second turn. But like taking first turn, like I know you're deleting at least the troop on that right flank on that right side of the mm -hmm. table. Um, so, you know, I'm, I start down 10 shots, but you know, do those 10 shots really mean a lot when I, I, I'm there, they would have been firing at probably scarecrows if they lived, you know? So like, I don't know how relevant their shots get. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I probably would have given you first turn though, had I won the roll. Interesting. Yeah. I thought it was it was key that I get in there and maybe get a few early shots in. As you say, take the troop off, maybe yeah. get a bit of damage onto the ridge, and then yeah. I've just got the advantage on that flank. Um, but you're right, I suppose you coming forward. I mean, I don't know if it, it doesn't give me it doesn't make a difference either way for me, but it does make a difference for you in terms of your effectiveness of shooting. 
Yeah, um, basically, like, like you have an army-wide stealthy, and then, like, trying to shoot at anything in cover, like, hitting on sixes is so miserable that, like, I, I would sooner shoot at a target that I don't really care about than, than basically throw away shots trying to hit you on sixes. Um, so, yeah, I, I popped into the guys, and I, I kind of talked about that over here, you know, um, how... Uh, you know, hitting on sixes is is is, is pretty useless. So, um, like a lot of times, like even even shooting at scarecrows early game, like I didn't, I don't particularly want to, but like the way you stack up, like I don't really have any better options. So, pile wounds into the giant hordes, hope to take them off. You know, and I got lucky on that first turn. And yeah, I can't even complain about dice this game because my dice were hot and it still didn't. It <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was like turning into scarecrows, and I was going. So you got more than fifty percent hits on five every yeah, single yeah. time with like yeah, three different units. Wild. So and I'm going, what goes, are these scarecrows doing to you? I mean, what are they just, you know... <laughs> what are they ever doing? Jeez. Oh, yeah. yeah, my decision to push up with the tree herder uh, on that right flank to try to make you commit was probably where I where I, I gave it away. Um, I, I wasn't expecting as much damage from the soul flayers. I forgot about Drunken Ram. Um, but even still, like, you rolled so hot over there with those flank attacks that he was he was getting taken off no matter what. Yeah. So I could have probably positioned him differently and and still made you commit, but not had to give up the flank. But I really didn't want to get the Wilt Daddy double charged by Butchers. So I typically do that angle thing where those two trees will angle towards each other so neither of them can get more than single charged. But to do that, I had to give that tree herder flank up. So if you watch this, that was, that was that question when we, uh, yeah, That was that question <laughs> we were looking at, if the, if the wind barn could have moved up to screen that flank. And take yeah, the, yeah. Take yeah. Back yeah. On the Get that, it down that's to one. Thing, the windborn were so useless this game because of the range difference. Like the windborn can't really be effective in this game against him because he's got those mind screeches. So I can't take them anywhere near mind screeches, or they just get lightning bolted off. Um, I, and then once that banshee worked around my flank, she was doing whatever she wanted. And yeah, it, it probably would have been better to just sacrifice that 165 points and just protect that tree herder. Because if I keep that tree herder alive for for that round and it can get into the fight and actually start like affecting the the middle of the board there like i have a much much better chance at pulling that one out so that was a big misplay yeah. on my part there so we were thinking like will father and a tree herder has a reasonable shot of one-shotting butchers like yeah. it's not yeah, unreasonable yeah. to see that oh yeah come out. definitely definitely um, yeah, that's the biggest thing I probably would have done differently is just giving up those giving up those windborne early rather than try to just run around with them all game and try to keep them alive because it was a, a futile effort. The other question yeah, I think that we talked about when I came in is is bringing the, the the Elven King over to the left flank. You know, bringing him into the middle of the fight might have might have made a big difference there. Yeah, you could have taken the wind, the butchers out first turn. I think with a uh, charge from both the knights and him in the flank. You're probably just yeah. eat to the knight, with, I think the knights did what six wounds on that first charge. So yeah, even with the king in there, they weren't yeah. guaranteed to they weren't they weren't guaranteed to pop those guys. So I mean he's, yeah. he's on well, twos and twos. He's <laughs> on, he's on two twos against them. Yeah, but so even though even if I do six wounds to them and put them up to twelve, like with, with the reroll, like he got fire. He like did roll Paul. Like, you should have got eight. Yeah. 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 yeah it yeah. should have been eight from him, six from him, one from Will Father, and then they would have yeah. been on fifteen. Yep. Put sure on a double one on average. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that, I mean, like you, like you start with the song that can go anyway. Come out. As a smaller question, because it it, it was really early on, um, the choice to split the tokens, um, especially just uh, given that you can't march with. Well, I mean, you can still march, but you're, you're reducing the speed on two units instead of one. Plus, I mean. The, the idea with splitting the tokens was to keep him from wind blasting one tree far out of the range of the other. With the tokens on there, he can't wind blast me. So I figure yeah, I yeah. the tokens. I put that was, one that was a good call. Uh, so I would have been just that's, pushing that's one of them back with the, yeah. the flares and I mean, stuff I because I could have stacked that wind blast unit right behind the trees and, and just use them to buffer so he couldn't wind blast me backwards so that they could at least stuck together. But but I, I had assumed that I was going to want to run those windborne away from that, that real shooty right flank. Um, mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to have anybody back there to stop them from getting wind blasted back, and he could just run up to me all game, and I would have never got those trees into combat. Um, so yeah, so that was the decision to split the tokens. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, jeez, that was a brutal game. That was um... yeah, that was a really good one, man. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's a uh, one that I've been meaning to see how it shakes out. Um, because uh, I, I've, I've seen a lot of the uh, the builds uh, for Night Stalkers that, that don't worry me. And I, I'll shoot you right through the stealthy. Because a lot of people will build Night Stalkers without a lot of ranged damage. Mm. And 
it, it doesn't scare me. Like if, if you're just trying to come up and combat me with, with night stalkers, I can sit back and shoot through stealthy and just buy time and, and, and just kind of stall the game out and just do what elves do. But against you with all that lightning bolt and that Banshee out there and all the wind blasts, like I got to try to get my, my combat stuff in. Um, yeah. it just didn't go well. <laughs> I could just hear Joey in the background going, Oh, I'll teach you wind combat. <laughs> now nah, I'm yeah. on the army now, but yeah, I like the melee build, but that's because it's a speed 10 melee build. It is yeah. very fast now. And so I don't mind shooting as much because I will just hit you on turn three. Yeah. Uh, you will not back out of it. I will put myself in charge range. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. I think that we're going to see a lot more of these these kind of sh- uh, half shooty armies. I think they're the ones that kind of work out quite well where you've got a, mm-hmm. a solid base of shooting plus a combat element thrown in there. I mean, you had two tree herders. When you hadn't given me the flank, I think I really struggled to get through those guys. Um, yeah. And I think that you know, in baiting me out with the Silver Breeze on the left-hand side, it was one of those ones where, all right, you might lose a Silver Breeze unit, but that means I'm not threatening from the other flank, so you could yeah. protect your trees a bit better. Um, yeah. I'd, like to see your, sorry, I'd, I'd like to see the uh, troop map of Great Stalkers get its um, left, top left corner onto the wall so it didn't take cover, but also recovering the flank. Yeah, from the silver breeze, so then you can just jump in there if you need to and make it a, a, like a harder decision on it. Yeah, which would have been another reason that the king should have gone off and done something else. You know, like I still had some ability to try to keep that unit in check over there, right. and yeah. So yeah, a couple, a couple, uh, a couple key, I think, misplays on my part, and uh, some just top solid play uh, from John, and a, a, a list mismatch, which I think uh, favors him a little bit on paper too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Even even my. I don't know. You, you was going to say you hit. I mean, the entire point of having stealthy, he's not supposed to hit. But somehow, that you completely ignored that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Just went, oh, no. That's I mean, always been my experience enough. with stealthy. It's like that's when the <laughs> dice find their fives. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so okay. much, guys, uh, for letting us watch the game. That was a great game. Uh, thanks to uh, Joey and Matt and Tom for hanging out with me and covering the match. And to uh, Matt and John for letting us watch. Uh, again, yeah. congrats to John on the win. Uh, Matt, uh, best of luck in the remaining two rounds of the tournament. you got two more rounds to go. Um, coming up on Wednesday, we will have Eric Schaefer versus Tom Annis at uh, 8.30 p.m. Eastern uh, right here. So My uh, my club mate for the record, Eric Schaefer. Go Nerdhammer. That's right. That's right. We're doing all, all Nerdhammer <laughs> round four, apparently. I don't know how that worked out, but that's how it worked out. Um, <laughs> Mike, oh, yes. like, I really oh, want to see some baseball jerseys on my That's right. <laughs> all PA yeah, all the time. Guys, though. It was a yeah. good time. Uh, so thanks to everybody at home watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, until next time, this is your host, Mike Atkins, saying you stay safe out there. And we will see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Bye, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.